everyone, I am Zabdubar. Welcome to a very special episode of the Sons of Sarazal podcast. Joining me this week, I have Dylan McCandless, a.k.a. SuperDM64. Hello, everybody. I was going to come up with a Star Wars-esque thing to say. Did not come up with one. You couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't think of one. You just, just, it vanished into the night, just like Yoda's Force I find my lack of ideas disturbing. No, not Yoda's Force Ghost, Yoda's body just disappeared. Yeah, I mean, but the same thing happened to Obi-Wan. That was like a thing in the old trilogy, and then in the new trilogy, they were like, nah. They were just like, everybody dies brutal, horrible deaths. <laughs> Qui-Gon's just, you... gonna, just gonna get stabbed in the gut, but later on, we're gonna find out that he turned into a Force ghost, even though... In but the... we never see Qui-Gon's Force even ghost. Even though in the original trilogy, it was kind of implied that your body disappearing was like you becoming a Force ghost. Yeah, yeah. like, you give up your physical existence in order to live a more metafictional one. Although I suppose well, we saw, never actually saw like old Anakin's body disappear, so I guess there is president. Uh, oh yeah, we didn't, did we? No. Yeah, and the bo- that body's still alive because because they uh, burn it. Luke, Luke did burn it, so does that count as disappearing? <laughs> um, maybe. It still maybe, exists as maybe, ash, though. Maybe, maybe in the Return of the Jedi, the secret explanation for because I guess you could, I think the argument you could make is that Darth Vader like, we'll make it Hayden Christensen, even though all the other Force ghosts look the way they did when they died. I don't, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know if there's a precedent in the expanded universe, which is not canon anymore. But anyway, for Sith becoming Force ghosts, but my my assumption for why Darth Vader could do it when prior to that we'd only seen good Jedi do it. My understanding is because I have because because he was burned and because his body disappeared, the Force was just like. Well, shit, we have to give him one of the technicality now. <laughs> no, man, it's because it's because the Star Wars universe, like, morality is super simplistic. Like, yeah, he was a pretty bad guy, but he turned good at the end. He killed the Emperor, so he gets to be a Force ghost. Well, good for fucking him, but how about all his fucking children he massacred? Not, not, not important. He had a coming-to-Jesus moment at the end. All that matters. Speaking, speaking of massacring children, I don't know how that segue works, but I also have Andres Perez, a.k.a. Gachinua. The greatest child massacrist of all. Is massacrist a word? <laughs> <laughs> it's coarse and rough. <laughs> Say hi to the good people, Andres. Hello, good people. Anyway, so, um, so do you hate sand people, oh. Andres? That's the question. So in case you've in case you've noticed, I know Donald Trump hates be... sand people. Yeah, he, he sure, sure fucking does, <laughs> doesn't he? He doesn't really understand that that's the path to the dark side. Um. Dar- D- Donald Trump is the Darth Vader of the real world in in every sense. Or is he more like the Emperor? Um, he's more like no, he's God. I hope not because because the Emperor is my favorite Star Wars villain. <laughs> Donald Trump. You're gonna pay the price for your lack of vision. <laughs> it's gonna be huge. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking die. Oh, uh, you gotta let your angle out. Mace Otherwise, Windu. you can't bang your own daughter. You just can't do it. Mace it's impossible. Mace Windu blew off my toupee. That's why I wear this hood now. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking great. Um, so as you've noticed, we are indeed doing a Star Wars themed episode just in time for the release of The Force Awakens, which was Dylan's idea, of course, because he likes the Star Wars for some reason. Um, no, we uh we all have an appreciation for the Star Wars, which is why the Star Wars. we're going to open because that's what it's called now. This, well, that's what the original script was called, and I think that that's a fucking way better title, The Star Wars. I kind of miss Blue Harvest. That's a nice, it's ambiguous so de- title. It's so definitive, though. The Star Wars, where it's like, this is the only war that took place in the stars. No other wars took place aside from this. And then, the, and but, then they were like, hey, by the way, there were other wars that took place in the stars. Indeed. Even before they but, made the prequel trilogy, they like name drop other wars in the first movie. They're like, you were in the Clone Wars? And I'm like, whoa, that's that sounds interesting. Where, where's that? It sounds ominous. Where's they that? Should called, they should have called the prequel trilogies Clone Wars. Star Wars, Clone Wars, huh? Huh? Never mind. Oh, oh no. Uh, so we're going to open this podcast in the only appropriate way that we can for a Star Wars-centric video. And gentlemen, that is of course by discussing the brand new Godzilla design. So Andres, why don't you take us up with that new story? Holy fuck. Well, this whole started yesterday where Toho released the official poster featuring the design for Godzilla as well as the release date for said film. And I believe Essentially, it, was... it looked like they spray painted a sock puppet, stuck a Google guy on it. <laughs> <laughs> Save it! We gotta let him finish the story! I'm reserving my thoughts for until he finishes the story. Go ahead, Andres, I'm sorry he interrupted. <laughs> sorry, I'm still recovering from a bad cold from Thanksgiving. 
So. Oh, okay. Well, I, I don't have the cold. I just had this annoying cough that I've had for two weeks. All right, that's cool. Anyways, <laughs> so the release date for Shin Godzilla in Japan will be July 29th, 2016. And we also had a, uh, what was it? There was also a teaser trailer that really didn't show anything. It just showed Shaky Cam. People running. Yeah, like, people running. Like, holy shit, people running. Stop the presses. <laughs> people running away from something in a Godzilla movie. What treachery is you this? You know, it's very important in a trailer that you show us something that we haven't seen before, you know, to kind of whet our appetite, especially with a franchise like this, you know. Uh, and obviously, people running was the best choice. Along with because that's roar. never happened. Have along they with, ever done along with stock ro- with a stock roar from fifty four? Yeah, have they ever done found footage Godzilla stuff before? Where they have they ever shown like in a Godzilla movie found footage people running? I don't think do they've this. really even been like shaky cam running before in a Godzilla film. I don't think so either. Don't Maybe I'm not remembering like a, a wide shot. Godzilla movies usually tended to be much more simplistic than that. Like in terms of. It's yeah, just like, we're going to stick a camera it, it, over there, and the people are going to yeah. run in front of it. If people were going to run, they were going to do it legit. <laughs> Not nearly as much thought is put into the human scenes as into the uh, into the kaiju stuff. I'll say that. Not in general, no. Um, I, I mean, don't know uh, if that's going to remain the same in this new film, uh, given the uh, creative people who are behind it. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, I mean, this movie is still completely up in the air. We don't know what the hell's going on with this thing. Um, but I'm very sure, are those, all, those, all the details, or are there any more details uh, that we must cover before we start talking about the meat of this thing? We see the detail, because all I've seen is the shitty head, and I'm like, uh. <laughs> um, <laughs> You're not fine. There was, <laughs> piece of they you? revealed, the, I believe, the height for the new Godzilla, which was 118.5 meters tall. How Maybe. high is that in feet? Because I'm an American. We're Americans, so we don't care about that metric bullshit. No, check right now. Under 18. You didn't have this prepared. I know how unprofessional of me. He didn't think he didn't think to convert this into American because he's not. <laughs> I know I'm gonna be the first. I'm gonna be the first person on on Donald Trump's shit list when he becomes yeah. president. It makes sense. He didn't uh, convert the meters to feet. We got to deport him. It is 388 so, feet. All right, so it's the biggest Godzilla. By 33 feet. Wonder why they did that. Because God, because legendary Godzilla, he was like what, 305 feet tall? 350. 350. Oh, okay, all right. They're like, hey, um, the American Godzilla is taller than ours. Let's make ours slightly taller. It's just gonna become an arm. Let's just yeah, let's just, let's just put one of his bigger dorsal spines on top of his head. That'll make him taller. <laughs> just realize. give him a ho- just give him a horn so he can be taller. If we keep trying to out-height each other, it's going to get really ridiculous, and eventually Godzilla's going to be, like, bumping his head on the fucking moon and shit. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, he's just going to end up... Because that would crush the surface of the Earth. He's just going to be, like, Galactus or Unicron at that point. Well... He's going to travel the stars, atomic blasting planets. Oh, so, God, we're, they're go- we're going to space Godzilla, uh, a space Godzilla territory. It's a space Godzilla, not the space Godzilla. But man, boys, where do we start with this? All right, so they released in a newspaper article the official first look at the design of Godzilla in uh, Godzilla Resurgence, a.k.a. Shin Gojira, and the internet decided to fucking lose <laughs> its shit. So if you haven't been following it, this this came up yesterday. This was uh, posted yesterday, right? Yes, yes. The uh, uh... Yesterday at the time of us recording this. Right, de- uh, December 9th. So, okay. For, like immediately following seconds after it went up, because I was on Facebook like relatively quickly after it went up, mm-hmm. the internet was just like it was on it. They were just like, uh, uh-uh, uh, we have to talk about this. And some of the discussions about it, many of them on our very own Toho Nation, yeah, not pretty. Um, yeah. There has been heated, heated debate. You have half of the people. You have half of the people on the internet like it's fucking awesome, and you have the other half of the people like, no, it's not. <laughs> it's really not though. <laughs> Um, it's actually but, really pretty bad. I, I, what I find it interesting is that both this and legendary Go- the legendary film gave us Godzilla designs that none of us were truly expecting. Or like, wanting. oh yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's like we want to do something that's completely different from people's expectations. And whereas with legendary, they went with a more scaly, crocodilian, dinosaurian look. Here, they just gave him a super. Fucked up, look, mutated, basically, deformed look. Basically, All basically right. what Toho did is they like, you know, they crumpled up a newspaper, right? And they like stuck in some toothpicks <laughs> for the teeth, and they just like drew a little eye. 
And they gave it the personality of somebody who's constantly concerned about their self-image. Because look at Godzilla's face. <laughs> and I do I mean a just... little eye. That is my biggest fucking problem with this thing. It's not like... I mean, it's it's oddly shaped, too. The nose is kind of weird. But, I mean, I need to see that in motion. I don't think I'm going to get over the eye thing. And here's why. G14, 2014, that is, mm-hmm. also had kind of a smaller eye than what we're used to. He also had a smaller head. You know, this, this Godzilla <laughs> has this fucking bulbous head with this little <laughs> yeah. tiny eye. Well, to be fair, we don't know how the, we don't know how big his head is in the relation to the rest of his body. No, and that's the problem. We haven't seen the rest of his body. It might look fine in context. We also haven't seen it I, I in was... motion because I, know, I remember before G twenty fourteen came out, there was that one still uh-huh. image of the bridge sequence that had me think, "Holy shit, he's way too fat." But once he was like in motion, it, it, I didn't get that impression at all. So it was like that one frame in that fucking sequence where he looked really fat, and then the rest of it he looked fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Man, okay, so the so the community's divided, mm-hmm. and I'm personally divided. I still cannot place my feelings on this design. Like the second I saw it, I was just so like blown away by the fact that it existed. I was just like, "What? That's the that's that's Godzilla Resurgence Godzilla." Yeah. I just I couldn't process it, so I kept looking at it and looking at it. They kept showing it to different people in my regular life, and I'm like, "This is the new Godzilla." As like a non Godzilla fan, what do you think? And then everybody had a different reaction. Uh huh. Like, some people were like, oh, my God, that's fucking hideous. Well, how could they do that? How could people take that seriously? Mm-hmm. Some people were like, oh, my God, that looks awesome. I saw somebody on, to- on on Toho Nation just, like, replace that eye with, like, a Heisei eye. And I was yeah. like, yeah, I saw that, and too. And I was like, look, it's immediately, like, twice as good. <laughs> <laughs> and, there's, there, I, and, there, and here's the thing. Everything that has caused controversy mm-hmm. is explained through the in- – no, not everything, but most of it has been explained through the intentions of the creators of this movie. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people, the debate comes in as to whether or not that has merit for creating this kind of design. Mm-hmm. So, okay, so on the one hand, what we're looking at is undeniably based almost exclusively on 54. Right. I think, I, me, I know I've made this con- comparison right away, and I know as other people have too, where they have been comparing it to like earlier maquettes, I think that's what they're called, earlier like models or concept art of godzilla 54 with the very yeah. stout lumpy uh, head the you know the t- eyes the uh i guess the moldy skin texture uh godzilla's you, design you know was... the shitty fucking puppet that was supposed to be chewing on the cow that's uh... yeah yeah this, that, this godzilla this godzilla seems to be based on all the versions of 54 we saw in the movie that weren't the suit yeah it's really interesting it looks like the puppet it looks like the maquette models it looks yeah. like it, it it looks like it looks like everything that wasn't the suit, and it's really really bizarre because I just I'd love to know why, because if you look if you watch Fifty Four, the moments where Godzilla looks the most unrecognizable and the moments that you definitely see that don't carry over to the rest of the movies are those moments. People never ever talk about except for creating memes of them overall, um, of uh. You know of of those of of those moments of Godzilla. Godzilla's iconic look was born in the suit, and and his look was really refined in that suit. Yeah, yeah. And this design seems to go all right. Everything that they refined back then, all the aspects of Godzilla's design that we've refined over the years, and all the aspects that they had mm-hmm. designed, they had refined from the get go. Mm-hmm. We're just gonna fucking throw that out the window. I guess when you it's mean almost by like refined, and I don't, and I'm not saying that that's necessarily a bad thing. Again, I, I, the reason why it's so hard for me to comment on this is because I have such a weird. It's so bizarre that I have to assume that it's probably gonna make perfect sense in context. It's almost like. As if- the Godzilla that we've become used to, like the way he looks in the high state or the Millennium films, mm-hmm. and this Godzilla are almost like separate entities who evolutionarily they're like different characters. Yeah. It's almost like they're two. It's almost like they look like two different species who have a common ancestor. And what I mean by that is they took the original design in '54 and they refined it in a certain direction over the years until we got the Godzilla that we that we're kind of used to. And then in this design, they were like, we're going to go back to the drawing board and refine the '54 design again, but in a different direction. Like, when you mention refined throughout the years since 54, I think uh, the way I interpret it is, like, ever since 54, they've been tuning Godzilla's design to where he looks more and more like a natural <clears throat> a natural creature, where uh, that looks like it could actually... It, it kind of took away that mutated aspect of him and make him look more like a, like a natural creature that would exist in that world. Whereas, well, not just that they've 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 gone to a lot of trouble to make or not, they've they've sort of refined Godzilla's look over the years to go. What do people respond the best to? Yeah, 
and they've gotten rid of all the stuff that people don't didn't respond the best. Like this Godzilla, like this Godzilla. Go ahead, Andres. Like, I'm sorry. You I'm sorry. I, I was just gonna say, like even 2015, uh, tw- not 20, 2014 Godzilla is a 100 percent natural looking creature with you know none of that mutated aspect to him, and but instead very naturalistic looking skin texture and all that st- all those features. Yeah, Godzilla, you're right. Godzilla became more refined over the years in the sense of people knew what the design was supposed to look like. Godzilla became his own unique sort of idea. So when somebody mm-hmm. goes, oh, that looks like Godzilla, they're thinking of Godzilla. But in 54, they didn't have that. It was mm-hmm. a new idea. It was a new IP. Yeah. So yeah, when you, you were told him. this is what Godzilla is and it's a mm-hmm. mutated dinosaur, mm-hmm. so then those aspects are going to have to be more emphasized in the design because that's what you want to emphasize to people. And as time went on, that just wasn't necessary. And you can see, so, you can see the symptoms of that in, in the first two sequels to 54 with uh, Raids Again and, and King Kong vs. Godzilla. They're very clearly just like fucking around with the design in those early movies. Like, okay, how's yeah. it going to look this time? And then they kind of fall, fell into um, what he would end up being for the rest of the Showa series pretty much when they, when they make Mothra vs. Godzilla. Yeah, 64 and 65 are very much so like the quintessential Godzilla designs that set, that set him on the path that he is on now. Mm-hmm. Or, or the general Godzilla design that we got. Um, this is not that at all. This is completely different. Mm-hmm. And Like 62 Godzilla you know, was the first time they were like, hey, you know the ears? Let's not. And like, <laughs> yeah, let's, let's, just, let's just chop those off. Um, and that stuck around for, like, a hot minute. Um, <laughs> well, looking at this version of Godzilla, maybe he did have ears, but they melted off. Yeah, that's it, it looks like that, right? Yeah, the ears didn't come back until the High State series, right? Right. Um, Wait, no. Yeah, no, they, no, 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 they yeah, didn't. Yeah, yeah. Right. It wasn't until 84 that they brought the ears back. And you can tell that because Godzilla has this very specific, like, look whenever he's looking down with the ears. He has this very, like, dragon-like appearance. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And in 54, you can see that a lot, and in 84, you can see that a lot. But throughout the entire Showa series, he doesn't look like that. And I think part of that was because they were trying to make him look a little bit more benevolent, a little bit more friendly. And 54 obviously didn't have that because they had no interest in that. And this is, again, very clearly with that mindset. This Godzilla is not supposed to look visually appealing. And it's unfortunate because I think some of the Showa designs could have looked better if they had tried them with ears. Like, you know, the ones that look like a frog wouldn't have looked like a frog if it had ears. Yeah, but those even still those designs still have massive flaws, but I'm just saying that I think this one is not made with the same mindset of we're trying to make it make a cool looking Godzilla. Mm-hmm. This Godzilla was very clearly made with the mindset of let's make a fucked up looking Godzilla. Be- and again, I have to assume that that's for a reason that makes sense in the movie. So, when I say that I look at him and, and I go, mm-hmm. "All right, that's really really ugly looking." Mm-hmm. I think that I'm supposed to go, right. "Oh, that's really really yeah. ugly looking." I don't think there's any chance that the, the I don't know exactly who made, designed this version of Godzilla. I doubt that it was Shinji Higuchi or well. If you do, you remember Nightmare Gamera? This kind of gives a yeah, Nightmare Gam- Gamera vibe. The thing, the things that I when I look at it, the things that I'm most reminded of are like we talked about before the puppets from '54 and the original maquettes. Mm-hmm. Um, '84 Godzilla in terms I'm of kind the of overall, also like, reminded of Raid Again Godzilla because they seem to have the same dentist. <laughs> uh, yeah. Also, the, the the really rough skin texture is very is very raids again. Does it look like um, on his neck? I see. I see a little bit of GMK in there as well. On his as well. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Bill. Well, I was just saying. I see a lot of GMK in there as well. Uh, on the back of his neck, does it yeah, look that's like? Yeah, another thing somebody did. I I saw somebody white out the eyes, and I was like, that actually looks passable as well. There's just something about those eyes that that bothers me. Uh, Go, go ahead, though, Andre. Uh, on the back of his neck, does it look like there's exposed muscles and tendons there? Can I see, like, a bunch of, like, lines? I assume that that's just all fried skin. Mm, okay. I don't see anything that makes me go exposed, exposed like, under skin. Um, like, there's those couple of creases on his neck that almost look like the gills. Right, the I was thinking the same Godzilla. thing. Um, obviously, I don't think they are. I think that they're they're actively avoiding that because of the fans' reactions to the gills. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's there there's a there are a couple of striking similarities between this and 2014. Um, the lack of ears for one. Also, the uh, um, une- the random uneven crocodile teeth that just jut yep. out and replace each other. Absolutely. Overall, the more crocodilian aesthetic, um, those rough patches of of, of scales that we, we talked about again look very crocodilian, mm-hmm. but. Above all else, Godzilla's skin texture in this is very much so based on the Showa Godzilla. Um, there really isn't, or on cl- or classic Toho Godzilla in general, they didn't do the, the 2014 thing of trying to make him look like a basic reptile. They mm. don't really seem to be interested in that. 
Um, like, Godzilla has a very specific skin texture, that very, like, rough, almost tree trunk-looking skin. Mm-hmm. Very, and like, this Godzilla and has burnt that. skin. Yeah, exactly, exactly, which is what he's had almost throughout all of the Toho movies, and that's what they put on this Godzilla, so that's definitely cool. Um, just to list off things that I like, because oh, there aren't... Oh, maple leaf spines. That's the thing. Um, the maple leaf spines are, like, my favorite thing ever. Um, they're my, my favorite Godzilla spine designs, because they're the classic ones. Mm-hmm. Um, they brought those back. I'm very thrilled with that, because uh, 2014 didn't have those. And I so. sent you, a, one of the pictures I sent you was of the newspaper, which showed more of the spines. Yeah, and you can see them going down. Um, the only thing is that they start off really big at the top, and they don't really seem to have that, like, really noticeable progression of getting bigger as you go down. Well, we haven't really um, seen much of the back, though. Although no, what's really true. weird is that in another newspaper image that I sent you, they show a green outline of his of his of Godzilla's body. Except I'm not sure if that's supposed to be his body because the spines themselves also look really fucked up in the the green outlines. Hang on, I didn't see that. It. Oh yeah. Oh, that looks like Godzilla 2000, though. Possibly, that- yeah. I'm looking at it's that. designing every 2000, but with a 54 head, because I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> Maybe not. I'm looking at it. It looks like 2000 to me from afar, but if not, it looks like Godzilla. And sil- it's got Godzilla's silhouette, and as we've established in the past, that's like the most important part. So mm-hmm. let me ask you guys this. Uh-huh. This is a very controversial question. We're going to get some shit for this, I think. Okay. Is, getting- it more, is it more or less faithful to classic Godzilla than 2014 is? Ooh, that's a good question. Because with 2014, I felt like, you know, it's like... Let's take all the, the the things that people know about Godzilla, you know, the silhouette basically, and and try to figure out how that would work. I'm gonna re, I'm gonna reword that actually. I'm gonna I'm gonna reword it to: Is it more of a radical departure from the status quo Godzilla design than 2014 was? Again, I, I, think, I think this again, one. Again, is... I can't really say without seeing the rest of the body. Um, I'm gonna and say the con- yes. And the context, I want to say. Term... Although... In terms of just the head, though, I mean, Legendary had a very angular head, but we've seen that before with, like, you know, the Millennium it, it, design. That, that head is right off the Heisei Godzilla. Yeah, so, especially so, at 84. Like, whereas in this one, I'm like, I've I've never seen his head look quite like that. It's No. It's, it, you, know what, you know what it also reminds me of? It looks like Godzilla, Showa Godzilla, got beat up really fucking bad. Yeah, and he never really healed. Like, he, he got messed up in a really hardcore bar fight. Like, like the Oxygen Destroyer didn't kill him, it just, like, fucked him up. <laughs> yeah. And that's why he's got that constantly concerned look on his face. He's just constantly in terror <laughs> of losing oxygen. oxygen. Yeah. His oxygen was destroyed. Now he can't fucking breathe. He's got fucking. Yeah, breathe. he's constantly just like, oh god. He's, he's like a cigarette. He's like a, a cigarette survivor. He's breathing through his neck. He's like that aging uh, gangster from Mask of the Phantasm. Oh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Chucky, Chucky Smalls. Yeah. No, Chucky was uh, the guy who got killed at the beginning. I don't remember what the fucker's name was. Uh, oh, my bad. I just remember Chucky saw your angel of death awaits. Yeah, but she but, um, that to this guy. Joker killed this guy. No, that's right. I want to say, based on... If this really is supposed to be a Godzilla that was the result of, you know, horrific, mangled, um, deformed and mutated beyond belief... I think this concept alone is meant to be more faithful to the original origins of Godzilla, just this brought to life to be, in a more realistic way. It seems well. It seems to definitely be more brought to life in a more detailed way. Yeah, obviously. I, I, but it's, I it's, like, right. it's almost like like a David Cronenberg version of Godzilla. I think that that's the perfect way to describe it. It's 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 exactly like that. It seems to go back to the original horror roots of Godzilla. This seems to almost be ignoring. Everything else that's been added to his mythos in the in the sixty two in the sixty one years since he was introduced, and just seems to be exclusively borrowing things from the original Godzilla. And I'm totally fine with that because we haven't seen that in a very long time. Hmm. Um, we already have 20... ourselves a superhero Godzilla or antihero yeah, Godzilla with legendary. Twenty fourteen, yeah, twenty fourteen Godzilla is like the Superman of Godzillas. So we're good on that. I'd like to see a villainous Godzilla again, because that's, that's my favorite version. I, I, that's the one I find the most compelling. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm excited that it's, it's definite, I would say, that we're going to get that version in this. Um, I'm just interested, just interested to see what they do with that. Mm-hmm. But I'm also hoping that they don't make him a boring Godzilla, because the problem with villainous Godzilla characterization is that they have the tendency to be a little bit boring, because he's just kind of a one-note horror movie villain then. Like, if you watch stuff like 
Godzilla against Mechagodzilla, I find that characterization of Godzilla very boring mm. because he's just like your basic run of the mill animal that's on that's on the on the loose. Like he has no motiva- motivation outside of that that we're told. I guess in that um, case, it would really have to work the hell out of the human characters and put a lot of more focus on them so that you want to root for them to survive at least sur- at least survive this Godzilla's attack. And that's, and that's the other interesting thing. It's it's hard to make Godzilla the villain nowadays because so many people fucking like him. Um, yeah, like it, you remember. It, I, I I now I'm thinking back to uh, the geeky gentleman review you did with uh, with Ian in Milan and how Ian always wants to root for Godzilla. Yeah, he was pissed that like there all the movies that I showed him, Godzilla was the antagonist, and that uh-huh. you weren't supposed to root for him. And I had to explain to him like, no, you're not supposed to root for any of the monsters. You're really just supposed to root for the people. Mm-hmm. Um, Those stupid and, uh, fucking boring people. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, well, that's, it depends. depends. For the most yeah. part. For the most. The example he brought that up with was Martha vs. Godzilla, and that's the one oh, that wait. I disagree with the oh, most on. Yeah. Because I really like that human cast. But yeah. King Ghidorah, I rewatched King Ghidorah recently. Wait, 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 wait. People, which one? Which one? Like ninety-one. 91? Yeah. Take that, you Those dinosaur. people are just not. Yeah. They're not. They're not really. Terasaw was interesting, and so is Emmy. But the rest of the cast is all, and Shindo, but he's not. He's not in it a lot. No, he doesn't get a ton of screen time. But yeah, Shindo is really interesting. Yeah, um, well, I feel like there's always at least one, for the most part. I, I can't think of any examples to the contrary, except maybe Godzilla's Revenge. I think there's always at least like one character who is kind of like, oh, that's an interesting character. I would love Shinbei? to do like an event. I would love to do like an, an Avengers of all the best Godzilla human characters yeah. and just have them like in a in a story together. That would be amazing. They kind of did that with Destroya, where they brought back the pilot, the Super X 2s pilot, to pilot Super X three. Yeah, they did do that a little bit, but it was all none of them had any screen time, and they also had like they had a uh, Emiko came back, and they had um they had Doctor Yamani's grandchildren. Yeah. And it's, so there was there were a lot of different old Godzilla characters that they did and bring the, back. The, the only other time they really did that was Godzilla Godzilla Tokyo SOS. Tokyo SOS did that. Um, make a G just the, make like a special G Force team made up of like <laughs> the best characters. Godzilla veterans. But but fucking M eleven like, Mickey Sagusa fucking. <laughs> The Heisei series has that inherently, though, just because of how tight you bring. The you bring back is. fucking Yuki. You find you that. bring back the guy who said, "What's happening to our planet?" <laughs> um, yes. You, oh wait, that actor—he's dead now. Well, he also was a recurring character. He was also you, in King of Reca- you, you reveal <laughs> that he was a Time Lord, and you just <laughs> you regenerate. Yeah, yes. That's why he was in both. That's yeah, that's why he was Captain Muramasa in Ultraman and the mentor in Kamen Rider. Right, right. He's he he's actually a Time Lord. And when he says what's happening to our planet, he's trying to blend in. And in reality, he should have said what's happening to your planet. <laughs> that's 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 why it sounded so awkward and weird. It was because he was like acting. He was trying to make yeah, it sound see, like he was Gallifrey really concerned, but he really wasn't. When Gallifrey got destroyed. He was like, what's happening to our planet? Well, no, he was like, oh my god. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he was started just wailing. Even while on, on fucking Earth, he's just like, "What's happening to our planet?" <laughs> he's a much better one, actor when he's when he's being himself. His voice, his voice is his voice is so fucked up because he's struggling to breathe in our atmosphere, <laughs> just like Godzilla. Um, no, it's okay. So the the thing I was trying to say before mm-hmm. that I that it was constantly being inter- interrupted during. I'm kidding. Um, I keep doing that to you guys, so whatever. Uh, is that you guys remember that original one of the original sketches for Godzilla's design back in fifty four was um, mushroom the head. mushroom headed mushroom headed Godzilla. Yeah. There's a lot of that going on in this. Even the head pose is very reminiscent He's of He's kind of a fungal infection main tango looking motherfucker, ain't he? He does, doesn't he? Um although I, I can you can also tell that the, the, the shot that this is very clearly like Supposed to uh, mirror is that close up that you always see a fifty four Godzilla. Yeah, with the um, eye go- even the, straight all the way right down to the eye, looking downwards. Yeah, that's what this is supposed to. The recapture. difference being that fifty four's eye was you know well proportioned for the rest of his body. <laughs> yeah, so that's so. Is there anything else that you guys really like about it that you'd like to say? Well, I guess I they... do like how when you look at it, you get the general impression that you're looking at, a, at like a version of the fifty four design. Like I like the overall feel of it. It's just little things about it that kind of you know bug the fuck. The head shape is the thing that I just cannot get. It past. looks like a fucking it's lumpy just so potato. Weird. Just like fucking... Funny enough, I remember way back in April. I'm not sure if we can say I mean, this or it not. It might be ugly on purpose. You know, it might. It... No, it definitely is though. That's the reason why I can't make it, heads or tails on my opinion. You see it moving it's around in context. Text, it's probably ugly in like a really beautiful way, like like like, uh, you like know. a pug. 
Because we're talking about <laughs> we're talking about fucking like Hide- like uh, Hideki Anno. like you know those moments Andres in Evangelion where uh-huh. like the the Eva's like angel face pops out and it's all like nasty looking and like it's got the big fucking teeth but there's something strangely beautiful yeah. about it running around eating people like or not yeah, eating kind of like that eat. moment from Evangelion 2.0 where Ava Unit One goes berserk and starts stabbing the fuck out of one of the angels meanwhile there's a children's choir in the background. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, like moments like that. Like, I think that's what we're going for. It's like he's gonna be fucking destroying shit, and he's gonna be fucking disgusting looking. But there's gonna be something kind of like endearing about like his like crooked ass smile. You, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the other thing. His mouth is really deep. You know what I mean? Like, oh yeah. The, like people have the been slit for his mouth it. is really, really deep. People have been comparing like, it to Attack on Titan, and I can't disagree. Um, mm-hmm. which is well, I mean, made by the same people, so I guess that makes sense. Um, half, all right, half so of those people. <laughs> We've been talking about this for a while now, um, almost almost a half hour. So I, I, we need to move on to the, want, to the to the theme of the episode. I did, sorry, I didn't want to share my final thoughts. Um, oh, no, I don't know. I was I was gonna say it. Let's talk about our, th- our final thoughts. So go ahead. Okay. Um, um the question I want to ask to, mm-hmm. to to make it as some summer uppery mm-hmm. as possible. Um, Are you guys still gonna see this movie? No. Uh, well, it's kind of. Has this made you less or more excited for Godzilla Resurgence? More excited or indifferent. More excited because I am 100% behind this design. Uh, way back in April, I remember. I'm not like I mentioned. I'm not sure if we're allowed to. If we're we can actually say this, but I'm pretty sure we can because it's been that long since then. But I remember, Bill. Remember when you and I went to ID, the IDW Publishing's old headquarters, and uh, we talked yeah. to Chris Mowry. Chris Mowry seems to know a lot more about the film back when it was in pre-production than you know than everyone else did. And he just mentioned to us that this was going to be a Godzilla that was unlike anything we had seen before. Or he said something oh, along the Which is definitely that, true. He, yeah. he, said so, right. he said something along the lines of that. And ever since that moment, back in a, all the way back in April, I have been mentally preparing myself for something... Like he said, I was expecting like uh, nothing I've ever seen before. I was expecting the most radical, fucked up horrific, most grotesque thing imaginable. So Andres is Especially like, yeah, knowing this is actually pretty tame. Yeah, yeah, basically I was, I know, um, Jeff Zornow actually made, like, he he had an idea for what the body was going to look like and it kind of looked like a zombie Godzilla, but with this head. And I'm thinking, like, yeah, I would I would be surprised if I saw that, but, um... Mm. Yeah, Do you I, want I was, that, I was, though, is the question. Yes, because it's different, it's new, it's fresh, it's it's just like Legendary Godzilla. We've never seen that take on Godzilla before, but I am I would like a new take on an old on, on an old character, uh, on a character as old as Godzilla. Mm. And it's just... I, I'm, I'm, I'm all new, I'm all for taking something old and putting a new twist on it. If they want to go with a more, with, a, with that Cronenberg-esque, you know, grotesque design, I'm all for it. And I like to bring up this one quote that Matt Frank made on the uh, on the new design that I wish to share here on the podcast. No, you're not allowed. It's copyrighted. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, on Facebook, he said, The new Godzilla design is both an aggressive departure and yet extremely retro in its approach. For a long time, we've been used to a regal, handsome, heroic-looking Monster King. Even the 2014 design, while monstrous and intimidating, is still ever so slightly meant to elicit a modicum of empathy with his furrowed brow and mammalian features. The 2016 design is none of those things. It is grotesque and deformed, a mass of emotionless, destructive force. There is no puppy dog superhero or noble anti-hero in him. He is a true monster, and I love it. And that's basically what ref- that's how I feel in general about this about this design as well. So. All the new little changes doesn't bother me. Yes, it's not my ideal got version of what I would like to got, like to see in a Godzilla design. However, this is not meant to be what I like to see because I get I like you mentioned before. I think this is supposed to elicit a ne- is supposed to elicit a negative response due to you're not supposed to like to look at this. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. That's the thing, and I like that. I like a scary a scarier looking Godzilla. Hmm. Mm. Dylan? Yeah, this is definitely a scarier-looking Godzilla. He's got some major rape face going on. Uh, <laughs> I definitely wouldn't want to run into him in a dark alley or an abortion clinic. <laughs> I mean, look, I, I mean, look, I've been a little antagonistic towards this divi- design so far. Uh, haven't we all? In this video specifically. Um, haven't really said much about it on the internet because, you know. You wanted to keep away, keep away from all that bullshit. <laughs> picky battles. Um, no, but... Uh, 
I, I, I'm trying. Basically, I'm reserving judgment. Same thing that happened with with 2014. I mean, I think 2014 was kind of a learning experience for all of us because. Yes, very much so. Especially in terms of like seeing what the design was looking like and like what we thought the movie was going to be. It's like it, the whole time, I, you know, I'm thinking I was very reticent about the movie up until going to see it because it's like I don't know how this is going to work when I see it in motion and in context. Mm-hmm. And so I just I need to see more before I form a real opinion. Um at the moment, you know, I really see what they're going for and I think that um it's going to ultimately depend on what the movie itself is like. Um, Because if this is pretty much a horror movie Godzilla, then I say that this design is very apt. Um, Uh Is it the Godzilla that uh, that I would have liked to have seen? Uh, Probably not, but I mean, I I was very... I didn't really have any uh, expectations or ideas about what he should look like in the new movie anyway. I saw some concept stuff on DeviantArt that was pretty good, but I never really had any, like, thoughts of, like, he should look like this! Um... Mm. But yeah, I'm just... I don't know what the fuck they were thinking with those eyes, though. That part pisses me off. But those are like... <laughs> those are like the 2014 feet of this design. Like, that's the one thing that's... Oh, yeah. Bug me. I see, I have my own part of that, but it's not that. Oh, well, what is it? Like, the fucking, like, shark teeth? <laughs> it's, the, it's the mouth, man. The mouth is the thing that just gets me. I just... I, I think... It's really, really weird looking. It's like, it's split way up his face. It's like, you want to know yeah, how I got looks, these scars? It looks like he's <laughs> supposed to have, like, a snake's ability to, like, really really extend his jaw. Or, like, maybe, now, like, 2014, he's supposed to have, like, that web web skin between his jaws, except... But we don't see that, Yeah, though. of course, because I guess he got, like, again, fucked up. Maybe. Okay, that's possible. Yeah. You know, now that I'm looking at the like, You know what I'd like to see? You remember that teaser image before where you could see, like, some of his scales and, like, there was a trilobite stuck in there? Yeah. yeah. There was, like, some of those, like, around on his body and shit, like, little deep... Little deep. There was detail. just a guy just melted into his fucking body. Yeah, man, there's like little little fucking details. A fucking wall. That would make sense too. Fucking wall of faces on his chest, like Freddy. Yeah, well, well that's but that's true though, because because that's what nuclear that's what nuclear explosions do. They burn people's fucking shadows. Well, not literally. That sounds really stupid. But what I mean is that it burns shapes into things when it when it disintegrates them. Yeah, yeah. So if Godzilla get hit by radiation, he would have like fucking. Animals and people and all kinds of shit. In there. Like the split second after people, in theory. Get, like the split second after people get disintegrated by a nuclear bomb, you're supposed to be able to see like after images of them because it's just like a cloud of dust shaped like them that hasn't blown away in the wind yet. Like, right, insane. It's like when Vegeta blows himself up in the Boo Saga. That's what it's supposed to look like. Yeah, um, yeah, he turns to stone for some fucking reason. Yeah, that, that, okay, that part of it is weird. Like, and he, and he like, and he like hovers there for a second. Anyway, this isn't about Dragon Ball Z. First, first he hits his son. He's like, I'm going to attack my family, and then I'm going to blow myself <laughs> up. Huh. Um, I'm going to assault a fat man, um, Seinfeld style. Um, but anyway, we already did a two and a half hour video about Dragon Ball Z. So, uh, all right, so my summer upper thoughts on this. Oh, Dylan, uh, more or less excited. Um, neither, really. I've been, trying, okay. I've been trying to keep myself pretty mellow about the whole thing. Okay, same, same, because I'm with both of you for for different reasons, potentially. All right, so I did not like this the first time that I saw it. I think I mentioned that already. The first time I looked at it, I was like, that's that's it? That's different and that's, scary. That's Godzilla <laughs> Resurgence? Exactly, I was like, that is not Godzilla. And the thing that I'm, I'm noticing looking at him right now... Um, that didn't jump out to me until just now. He looks like Biolanti, kind of. You remember when you had that idea, Bill, for Gamera versus the fucked up Gamera? Yeah, this is the fucked up Godzilla. Like, I feel like the fucked up Gamera just looks like this, but with tusks. Exactly. Um, so yeah, I'm not crazy about them. There are a bunch of things about this that I look at and go, that is not something that I like in a Godzilla, in a Godzilla design. But again, I can't really make that kind of judgment on it. Because I guarantee you that all of it is intentional. When I look at him and go, oh my god, that's really hideous and ugly and scary looking, I think you're supposed to go, oh my god, that's really hideous, ugly, and scary looking because that's the version of Godzilla they're trying to bring to screen. Mm -hmm. And that's a feeling about Godzilla that they haven't really tried to capture in a very, very long time. And the thing that people don't realize is that that perception of Godzilla was entirely given by the audience. The sympathy and, 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 and empathy for Godzilla's actions was entirely... Uh, put upon that character by the audience. Well, um, I think there was a little bit of leeway in, in the original design, too. Like, it was frightening, but then it was just, like, just cute enough 
to where you could be like, oh, I'm kind of sad he died. And that was and that was entirely because of the the limitations of the suit at the time. And now and now in this version, they're like, we're gonna we're gonna take all of the scary stuff and just void out all of the cute. <laughs> because they can, because they don't have to deal with the limitations of the suit now, so they can make him look a little bit more fucked up and less human and, and, and less empathetic. I just had a thought. Um, what if this is the elephant man of Godzilla? Where there's like a well, moment where he's like, I am not a kaiju! Well, it's just like, again, this is, and I'm, and I'm with you guys as well, this is all going to come down to how they do it. Yeah. I cannot tell you whether or not I like this or not until I see how they handle it in the movie. I mean, maybe, I don't know. Whether, whether, whether or not... Bill. You, don't you know this is the internet? We're supposed to argue with each other and well, I told you, I don't really, each other. I don't really love it, regardless of the fact that I can't tell whether or not I'm supposed to yet. Um, and actually, again, by I don't making think I the am. design itself scarier, they have license to actually make it be a much better plot element should they decide to make him somewhat sympathetic. Because it would be like, he's this horrible, misunderstood, fucked up looking monster. And st- That would definitely be an interesting tack to take with the whole... The reason why I punish humanity is because I was the last of my kind, and then you made me the first, and I've never been lonelier. So, and there's also always been an air of, like, tragedy in Godzilla's character because he's just been totally deformed by the atomic radiation. Yeah. So, there's always been that aspect of it as well. He feels ugly. Um, he's not a beautiful, sexy kaiju, um, as if any of them are. Um, so, I don't know, man. I don't know. Some of those kaiju, I'd, I'd, I'd fuck <laughs> Mothra. <laughs> Um, been looking at that it, rule thirty four side again, Dylan. <laughs> Hell, he never man, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> you seen the legs um, on Titanosaurus? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, man, Gabber is where it's at. Look at those abs. <laughs> um, so anyway, you work out. Yeah, this is different, and I'm not sure how I feel about it yet. So if you decide to hate me for that, all right, that's cool, I guess. Um, so we just it just remains to be seen on whether or not this works for the con the contextual version that we see in the movie and, and in motion and everything. So I'm reserving judgment on whether or not I think it's a good Godzilla design. As of right now, again, the aspects of it that I'm seeing do not jump out to me as, hey, I like this. But um, overall, I'm, I'm, I'm with you guys. We're just going to have to wait and see and see how this all plays out. Mm-hmm. Um, but I am with Dylan. That eye, that eye is a weird choice. <laughs> um, again, also, why the look of just utter, utter concern on his face and utter just like, oh my god, Maybe what's, what's we happening need to, to my life? We, we really need to know what exactly he's looking at. Yeah, we need to know. What like, do you think he? What do you think, audience? What do you think he's looking at that can give him such a perplexed look? <laughs> such no, it's not perplexed. It's just a look of just sheer concern. <laughs> just a look is of he, like, is he looking at four chan? It's it's just a it's a look of just complete just lack of confidence. Just like is he look is, just... is he looking at at Donald Trump or is he looking at like the son that he raised and sent to college and has yet to do anything significant with his life? He's he's looking at the son that 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 disappeared for twenty years and he finds out is a lot more rich and successful than he is. <laughs> um, just a, a just a complete destruction of all self confidence has happened to this version <laughs> of that slut. I'm thinking he lost to Angerus in a fight and that's uh-huh. why he's so fucking like just lack of self confidence. Um, or he could be looking at little Godzilla. He could <laughs> he could could be doing that too. Um, oh, it's hilarious! I just clicked off of the picture that you sent me on Facebook. Uh-huh. Um, and the first thing that I saw in Toho Nation after that was just a fucking post about how people are idiots for not liking the new Godzilla design. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, it's it's self-proving. It's it's constantly just a self-proving art, man. Um, well, Dylan is BRB. Mm-hmm. So I think we should wait a few minutes before we start the uh, the, the the actual proper um, Star Wars part of the show. Yes. Um, so what do you say we just take a couple minute break? Um, Set it out or what? Oh yeah, I'll cut it out. Okay. Um, uh, all right then. Sorry, I need to drink a water. <laughs> um, same thing too. Yeah, ooh, man, that was a lot of talking. <laughs> that was weird. I, I I never get burnt out on one of these podcasts where I'm like, damn, I need a minute <laughs> just to not talk. <laughs> what, Bill? Not talking? I know it's it's crazy, but I, yeah, I just I need a minute just to get a minute. I need to find my center, my, my Star Wars center. Ah, that's some good not talking there. Uh, uh, <laughs> I think it's because, like, I've been, like, dread not dreading, but I've been, like, like really just, like, anticipating us talking about the new Godzilla design for, like, two days. Yeah, yeah. 
So because I knew I had a lot to say about it, so it's just like, man, I'm gonna be really tired after I finish talking about that. <laughs> and I am. But yeah, man. Yeah. It's not terrible. It could have been worse. <laughs> could have had a Jay Leno chin. That's definitely Back, true. Backward shark fins. Could oh my god. Could have been fucking half piranha. Could have featured a cast featuring The Simpsons. That would have been a bad thing. I guess not. It's kind of but distracting. I'm, I'm looking at a CG like model that somebody did of the new design. It looks even worse. Like it's, <laughs> it doesn't even look like Godzilla. It, it looks like a fucking. Have, uh, speaking of fan depictions, have you seen both Zornow and Frank's depictions? Uh, I saw Zornow's. I, oh no, you know I don't think I did see Zornow's actually. I think I saw Matt Frank's. In that case, I'll send both to you just in case. Yeah, go ahead. I'd like to. I'd like to take a gander. I'd like to take a look. All right, Dylan, you're back. We took a break because we stopped talking about Godzilla, and I needed a minute to not talk. Yeah, I'll also, sh- I'll send you. Uh, and to Shinichi. recalibrate your brain, get into Star Wars mode. Yeah, that's well, that's it. It's just like we were just like in a hardcore Godzilla fan mode. Now I'm like, I gotta talk about Star Wars. Two there you very go. different things. I, Should be easy to jump in. The last in. two are made. The last two I sent you are, were made by Shinji Nishikawa, who does that awesome like chibi Godzilla artwork. Okay. Except the chibi version of 2016 is fucking horrifying. Oh my god! <laughs> that is fucking horrifying. Yeah. You seen that? Uh, if you guys seen that comic that somebody posted to Toho Nation where it's like a bunch of Showa kaiju with like yes. horrified yes. expressions on their faces, and New Godzilla's like, "What do you think of a new look?" <laughs> it's like, what do you think of my new look, guys? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Andres, that fucking voice has never been more apt for a Godzilla design. Like my His new face. makeup, my new makeover. <laughs> I did it myself. I didn't have a mirror. I went to the They're the best I could do at such short notice. <laughs> All I had was the water below my feet, but it could never stop moving. I don't think it had any negative effect on my look at all. Maybe I should have jumped a lot. I made the same splashes. plastic surgeon who did Michael Jackson's nose. He's tremendous. <laughs> oh my god. I am hideous and I hate myself. He just breaks down. Kill me! <laughs> All right. So Gina Davis mercy kills him with a shotgun. <laughs> oh, that's really sad. <laughs> All right. I want, so let's I want talk Gina about Davis to be in the movie. Now. I want Gina Davis to be the one <laughs> who kills Godzilla at the end of the movie. She hasn't done anything in like twenty years. She's too busy not fucking Jeff Goldblum anymore. So she's she's busy. She can't shoot Godzilla in the head. She's too and busy. God damn it, we need to talk about Star Wars. She's too busy no longer having a career to, to do that. Ooh. Ooh, hardcore savage. Anyway, so, moving on from our Godzilla section of the show, um, we, we were going to, like, we actually had a conversation about whether or not we should even, like, put this in this episode because we were just going to exclusively focus on Star Wars. Yeah, my but, thought was, was you know, we could uh, we could always record the Godzilla thought separately and, like, make it, like, a mini-sode. And Bill was like, yeah, that makes perfect sense, but I'm not going to do that. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> and I was also just like, that would require more work, so I'm not doing that. Um, But anyway, so, yes, uh, Star Wars. So the Star Wars The Force Awakens is exactly a week away from the moment that we are recording this. And people are excited, or so I've heard. Um, There has definitely been no evidence to support the fact that people are looking forward to this movie. It definitely isn't the highest grossing pre-ticket sale of all time or anything. It definitely isn't going to be one of the biggest pop culture phenomenons of all time. Now it is Star Wars, man! So, how I figured we'd start this off is... Because we're just going to kind of generally talk about the franchise, mm-hmm. and mainly because we haven't we we've talked we have talked a lot about Star Wars on the show, but what we haven't talked about on the show is our own personal connections to Star Wars, and I feel like we need to what to, to establish what we've that. We've mainly talked about concerning Star Wars is like very news related, like yes. Disney bought Star Wars, and then like they released a thing. We've always talked about Star Wars in a very reactionary manner, where it's always sort of been like, it comes up, so we talk about it. We never t- bring it up in, in a way where it seems like we have any real great personal investment, or we haven't made that clear. So I feel like if it does exist, and I'm not sure if it does, we'll have to find out as, as we go through the three of us, um, I would like to establish that now because I feel like it would be the appropriate time. So whoever wants to jump in, why don't you just tell us how you got into Star Wars and 
what exactly it means to you, if anything? Whoever wants I mean, to jump in. Star Wars was kind of huge for me growing up. I'm not going to lie. There was a time in my youth when there were essentially three franchises to rule them all, and that was, you know, Star Wars, Godzilla, and Dragon Ball Z. Um, two of those remained on top for the entirety of my life, but over time, Star Wars sort of fell out of favor, I guess, mainly because of being tired of George Lucas's shit. Um, and not having anything good for years. There, there came a time when I was very disillusioned with the franchise and, and, and didn't really care anymore, but my enthusiasm has been greatly renewed uh, now, thanks to uh, the new movie coming out and everything you know, looking so fucking amazing. Um... What is your favorite Star Wars thing ever? My favorite Star Wars thing. Not in, I'm talking movies, expanded universe, anything. Anything with the Emperor in it. He's like my favorite character. I especially fucking love when in in, in Return of the The Phineas and Ferb Star Wars special. <laughs> I especially, he's in that. It counts. I especially fucking love him in fucking Return of the Jedi when he's when he's electrocuting Luke. Because that scene goes on way too long of just moments of him like stopping to trash talk. It's like it's like he's poning Luke and he doesn't know when to drop the mic. Like every few seconds he just stops and's like, "You will well, pay the price for your lack of vision." And then he stops and he's like, "Now you will die." And I was just like waiting for like a yo mama joke and it never came. It's just, it's, it's just it's a, like he has been waiting for that moment though for years. He, he has is, had Vader chasing Skywalker, oh, Luke Skywalker. I think for the years. reason that his character, that I think the reason I love his character so much is just like the stellar fucking performance from Ian McDermott. Uh, yeah, and it's weird too because it was so iconic easily, so quickly. He is easily the best part of those of the fucking uh, prequel trilogy. Yeah, just that we got more expansion for his character, and we got to see him like play more sides of that character, the charismatic side, the friend, the the side that wooed Anakin Skywalker to join the yeah, dark side, like 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 in kindergarten or like first grade or shit. Like when like people are on we got the... to see him use a lightsaber, like all that really cool stuff that we didn't see in the original series because he's only in one of them really. And he shows up for two seconds in The Empire Strikes Back, and he's only mentioned in The New Hope. Back back, um, back in, like, grade school when people would be playing Star Wars, like, on the playground, like, everybody else would be like, I'm Luke Skywalker, I'm Darth Vader. I was like, I'm the fucking Emperor, bitch. <laughs> like, I would, like, I would wear my hoodie, and I would, like, do the voice. I used to be able to do the voice really well, but then, like, I hit puberty. Um, Let me ask you guys, did you guys get into Star Wars before or after or during the prequels? Before, oh, definitely before the before prequels. Before the prequels. I was introduced to Star Wars very young uh, by my aunt, actually, who was a huge Star Wars fan and saw them all when they came out. Well, so I'm the black sheep of this group, aren't and I? Then, I, could, I could and then I very clearly them. remember, even though I was like five, being super stoked back in 1999 when Phantom Menace coming out, and being a child actually liking it. <laughs> um, uh, well, I got into Star Wars a smidge later in life, and I'm younger than you guys, um, and I'm sure like many people in my generation, many of them probably not proud to admit it, and I mean, what am I going to do? I can't control the year that I was born in, so yeah, I was... Shit. You were like, I'm going to be born later. Just so that way I can be introduced to Star Wars through the Star Wars prequels. So yeah, yeah. I was introduced to Star Wars through the prequels, actually. Um, episode 2 was huge in my life when it first Garbage. came out. All of my <laughs> friends were obsessed with that movie. I like, I like episode, two, episode 2 first when I first saw it. That movie changed my life. I was, it like blew me away. Uh -huh. And now listen... I will say, I had seen Star Wars prior to that, obviously. Like, it had been on TV or whatever. Mm -hmm. I would go to Hollywood Video and I would see it playing on the, on the big TVs in the back or whatever. I knew what Star Wars was, but I wasn't a fan of it. It didn't hook me until Attack of the Clones came out. Um, and I also remember when I saw trailers for The Phantom Menace and when I saw, like, random stuff from it. Like, I remember there was this guy at my dad's work who was a huge Star Wars fan. And he had, um, what's the, what's the main... Pod racer who who who's like against Saboba. Against, Saboba. Saboba. There was a Saboba maquette like hanging above his uh his his uh his lift, which is you know it's like where you work in a in a, in a mechanic's garage. Huh. And it just constantly terrified. I always me. Like, wanted Darth Vader to go back to Tatooine and find Saboba <laughs> and just fucking like kill him. <laughs> dead is he? Is he dead? I don't remember. I think he dies in the Phantom Menace. No, 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 he doesn't. Oh, no, he doesn't die. At the end, you see him, like, on the ground in his pod, and he's like, yeah, and he's, Fuck. like, touching an alien link. He's dead! No, you're right. I, he, I think he did survive. Um, but, uh, yeah, so Attack of the Clones is the thing that got me into Star Wars. Um, I remember the ship that the uh, the, 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 the bounty hunter uses... Slave to One. Get away. Yeah, that, that, uh, that, that, that she uses to get away from... Uh, from Obi Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker. Oh, that show! Uh, when you said the bounty hunter, I thought you were talking about Jango Fett. That's... Oh no, 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 not Jango Fett. You're talking about the, uh, uh, the speeder that she uses on course. Yeah, 
That was the first Lego Star Wars thing that I ever. I didn't got. know you were talking oh, about Zam Wessel. I thought you were talking about Django. Fett. No, 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 no. I was obsessed with Django Fett though. Django Fett was my favorite Star Wars character. Django Fett was really badass because we. Had, it was like we had Boba Fett again, but we actually got to see him do things. <laughs> yeah, because that's the thing about. Boba Fett. I never really got into Boba Fett as a character because we never saw him do anything in any of the Star Wars stuff that I was familiar with. Um, hey man, he had a jetpack. He could fly. Once you can fly, yeah. that means you're automatically badass. Yeah, but Andres, you know the only time that we ever see him use it is when he fucking flies into a Sarlacc pit. So I don't know if grounds for being badass can be solely based on that in Boba Fett. Attack of the Clones was really cool when I saw it first time as a kid. Now, in retrospect, it's like the most boring of any Star Wars movie. It's so bo- and looks like shit too. The CGI is the worst, I think, of all three of the prequels. I think it's even worse than A Phantom Menace. Which reminds um, me, I started watching the original trilogy in preparation for the episode four, episode seven, The Force Awakens, with my family. And so I re- oh, over the Black Friday weekend, I got the new uh, Blu-ray uh, set, box set of all six movies. The only reason why I got all six movies is because that's how you get all the special features, because if you get the Blu-ray for the original trilogy, you're just going to get commentaries, and that's it, which is bullshit. Uh, but is, are, are, is, is it George Lucas's commentaries? Yes, uh, along with an, and there's an alternate this is the commentary. Part where, I, where I put a fucking uh, lizard in the background, because uh, the desert was a little too boring, I thought. You know? so that's, I, a, that's the thing. So well, I thought I'll use some shitty Scooby-Doo-esque CG to, uh, to spice it up a little. Here's the thing. I, when I was watching A New Hope, I just realized, because it's the first time I've seen, like, special edition New Hope in, like, forever. So I've seen, I'm watching it, like, a couple days ago. I'm thinking to myself, wow, this CGI has aged horribly. Yeah, it looks like shit. As much as I give George Lucas shit for revising those movies, I want them to revise them one more time. Just to, like, <laughs> just to make the CG just look to slightly fix better. The CG, just to, like, bump that CG up from, the sh- from like, Scooby-Doo level to, like, at least Jurassic World like, level. This isn't, where like, I can this... look at it and be like, that's, that's okay. You're just like, okay, that I can see that existing in the same reality as all the live-action stuff. But, the, 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 the like, the, like, episodes one and two, man, they look like crap. And... Episode one, not so much, because Jar Jar actually holds up pretty well, just visually, I mm-hmm. mean. Um, but man, like uh, that fucking dude in the diner in episode two oh, je- looks je- like shit. Jetster, Dexter, Dexter, Jetster. Whatever, whatever his name uh, is, people on Cam- people on Camino look like shit. That's the a shame battle, because I love the that battle character. at the end in the fucking Coliseum on Geonosis. Oh, with the, looks with the, like with the, shit. With the three monsters. Yeah. Oh. The ro- the, the big rhino looking one looks okay. No, no, but I mean with the with the clone troopers and the droids and everything. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. Like the garbage. clone troopers are like moments of them walking through the dust and shit, and I'm like, well, this is like some PS1 graphics. Yeah, it, and that, that was the other problem. All the all the clone troopers in the prequels were CGI. Yeah. Right, right. Even, so, like, there were even moments where they put the actor who played J- uh, Django Fett, they they just put his head and digitally put it on a on a, on a a digital st- clone trooper body. It looks like shit. Um, and, and the prequels are filled with that. And then, of course, you go to the remastered versions of the original trilogy, mm-hmm. and you've got the singer in, a, in, in <laughs> Return of the Jedi. That weird who, random, like, furball who just spits yeah, on the that, camera. Yeah, that even worse. Yeah, he spits on the camera. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I told this story on one of the podcasts before, but I, I, I didn't see the original version of Return of the Jedi mm-hmm. until way later. Yeah. Um, so the first version I ever saw was the was the special edition version. God. And when I was Dude, watching, I still it, have I still have my special edition VHSs, but they're like the less special edition. They're the '97 edits, so it's like all that shit's still in there, but it doesn't have Darth Vader screaming no, so I can still live with myself. Um, so it has all the shitty CGI, but not that. So I guess that evens out. I still have the uh, um, VHS of the uh, untouched versions. I have digital versions of the untouched versions, and I cherish them with all of my heart and soul. Um. Uh. So when I saw Return of the Jedi, it fucked with me that there was so much CGI because I was like, this does not look like a movie from 1983. I had to ask my parents and be like, did this come out in like the 80s? Like, how does it look like that? And they're like, we don't know. That's weird. Like, funny enough, like the whole purpose uh, for George Lucas going in and changing and making all these edits is to, in his eyes, update them so that they can, an, a modern audience can appreciate them. Well, and, and it's yet, not like everything he changed was 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 terrible. I mean, let, let's be honest. Like sometimes he like makes an explosion look cooler, and I'm like, okay. I mean, let's, let's, yeah. we have to face facts. The lightsabers look better. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like undebatably, they look better. But it's funny. Yeah. It's like you're trying to update the film, so you're trying to keep the films up to date, and yet you haven't updated them in over a decade. So now they they've lost their purpose now. 
Well, for me, it's the thing about Star Wars is in terms of the special editions, they they update the shit that I don't care about. Like I don't give a shit how it looks. It's just like the weird thing about watching A New Hope mm-hmm. is that it's very clearly written with no conception of an expanded universe beyond it. Right. No. Right. So all the references that are in it are so just archaic in terms of the rest of the Star Wars universe. Are you a little short to be a sto- stormtrooper? Well, considering that they're all clones of Jango Fett. No, no, I'm not. I'm actually... But... Well, no, not the, not the stormtroopers. Yeah, yeah, the stormtroopers, they, they, they... Yeah, but they didn't explain that until later. They're like, <laughs> hey, we stopped using clones after a while. And, I'm like, and God knows what's going on now. Who, like, who the fuck knows? I mean, I, I think... Well, now the they're new black. Shows, the new... <laughs> I just the assume new... that they're all black because I've seen. Well, I, I know that the... I do know there's a flame trooper now. That's well, I know awesome. that the stormtroopers in the original trilogies are in the original trilogy are very few of them are clones. Most of them are recruits. Like in, I've I've recently looked this up where in and there are several episodes of Star Wars of the new show Star Wars Rebels, and they do touch upon the fact that a lot of the old clone troopers they've like grown old and the whole program's been retired and that sort of stuff. Yeah, I mean, I can I can understand if like they they made new clones based on new templates and everything, but that's never indicated. Was in great stuff that level I've seen. in Battlefront Two, where they had like the scientists on Camino. Oh my God, that was so bad. The scientists yeah. on Camino revolted against the Empire, and so you had stormtroopers fighting clone troopers. And yeah, was that like, was the very mm. beginning of the war, so it was just like it, you still had, it was just, it was still the five hundred first, but they were all in stormtrooper outfits. That was so cool. And they had like that other level where like there was that one Geonosian left hiding out on Mustafar, and so it was like stormtroopers versus the droids. And I'm like, see, more like cross generational what if scenarios would be nice. Yeah, and there and there is if you if you delve into the expanded universe, there's a lot of that. Um, like right now, I'm listening to an audiobook that's actually not that great, and maybe somebody listening to this will be pissed that I said that. But I'm listening to Star Wars Kenobi, which is the you know, story of Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan Kenobi's time on Tatooine in between episodes three and four. And so far, I haven't really been enjoying it because it's like, it's everything I don't like about ex- Star Wars Expanded Universe stuff. I don't care about the economy of fucking Tatooine. I just want to fucking read a story about Obi-Wan Kenobi's character. I don't give a shit about fucking trade shit <laughs> and fucking... And, and and fucking ethics on Tatooine. It's like, I don't care. I just want to see Obi-Wan Kenobi fuck shit up well, and feel bad for cutting his fucking friend in half. That's kind of a weird spot to choose to do an expanded universe story because it's just like, he's hanging out on a desert planet. Like, there's not... Like, maybe every now and then he has a run-in <laughs> with, a, with a band of Tusken Raiders. That's interesting. There's two sons and no women. What am I supposed to do? Yeah, but it's like, for the most part, he's just like hanging out on a sand planet. Like, it's not all that interesting. <laughs> Well, the book so far has been interesting in terms of he has it's the beginning, so it's it's the beginning of his time on Tatooine, so he has to reconcile the fact that he's not a Jedi anymore. I've always so wanted to see. I've always wanted to see, and I'm sure they probably have this out there somewhere that I and I just haven't seen it. I've always wanted to see like Darth Vader having to adjust to his new like half robot body. Mm. Mm, I'm sure it exists. I'm not familiar with any anything specifically that covers that, but I'm sure it's it's out there. Because it would be an opportunity um, for more Emperor stuff, yeah, basically. Because most of the Star Wars stuff that's coming out now that is, you know, EU stuff in the new canon mm-hmm. takes place like right right before or right after A New Hope. Like the the Darth Vader solo book, based on the, well the stuff that I've read, I've only read the first the first issue, mm-hmm. but based on what I know, all of it takes place right after A New Hope and in between that and Empire. Mm-hmm. So there isn't anything that I'm f- familiar with that takes place before A New Hope that covers anything like that. You guys so. stoked for Rogue One? Um, I yeah. know nothing about it other than a Gareth Edwards and Rebels. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it has the Empire yeah, will be in it for ten minutes. Rebels <laughs> stealing it. plans for the Death Star, possible Darth Vader cameo, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, no, he is. I in guess it. so. This is like the classic era of Star Wars, so I guess so. Yeah, I mean, as long as are they, back they, 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 give them a scene. Here's the, here's the thing: Are they going to keep things consistent, like keep the low, te- the lower tech, techno- the lower oh, technology? Yes, absolutely, they are. I mean, they've they're already doing that in fucking episode seven. It's got that more sort of old school retro look, mm-hmm. um, despite the fact that it's in the future. Buttons, from... no touch screens. Exactly. It's it, even, even even though the fact is, it's in the future from what we saw in the original trilogy. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah. my problem with Rogue One, this isn't a problem, this is just what it is, so it's just sort of my own personal taste issue. Mm. I mean, aside from the bad track record of Star Wars prequels, but we won't get into that. Um, I would be but, more interested uh, in a prequel to Return of the Jedi, where I can finally see those Bothans dying to bring us this information. <laughs> well, well, what I mean is that it's kind of hard to care, because you know how it all turns out. Like, is, are we going to have Briggs, or was that, was that Luke's friend's name, who died in The New Hope? No. 
Yeah, the guy who was on Tatooine. That's kind of a yeah. problem with the sequel trilogy, too. We knew how it was going to turn out. I mean, the prequel trilogy. We knew how it was going to turn out. Um, yeah, well, that, it, it's hard to get excited for that, because it's just like, all right, so we're going to find out slightly more stuff about what we already knew. Ooh! <laughs> that can't be interesting. But then again, X Men First Class kind of got a, was able to make an entertaining movie despite knowing yeah, how the was, relationship was, was going to end. Yeah, but that was a half reboot. They also like did things that you didn't expect, which wasn't always a good thing. It was like, hey, this is how Cerebro happened. And I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> but it was also so far in the past, Andres, that it was kind of easy to and focused on characters who weren't the protagonist. For, and I guess you could say that about this too. Mm-hmm. And again, I'm not saying that I'm not excited for this just because it takes place before before the stuff that we've seen before. I'm not saying that I'm not excited for it at all. I am. It's a Star Wars movie. But um, I'm just saying that it's hard for me to get excited about that more so than, say, Episode 7 or 8 because it's not showing us anything that's a progression from what we've seen before. It's just mm-hmm. expanding what we already know, which is interesting, but they're going to have to work harder to make me care. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just like the fact that we're getting, like, expanded universe films now. Like, you know, they're going to do a Boba Fett movie. And isn't the other one that they're doing, like, Young Han Solo? Yeah, yeah, yeah and a lot, apparently it's been yeah. reported that a lot of actors have tried to audition for the role. I say... And that's that's got to be a sought-after role. I too, say get Chris Pratt. You play um, <laughs> no, that, that would be way too, like... Everybody would go, okay, so they put Star-Lord in Star Wars now, so this is completely... Uh, you redundant. shave his fucking beard and you have him do his best Harrison Ford impression. So pretty much what he was doing <laughs> in Jurassic World. Just, just like, get off my plane. And then he's just laying a fucking... You know, he's shitting on Donald Trump in Vine videos. Get off my Falcon! And he just like, you know, have him meet mm. Chewbacca. There was an explanation for how he met Chewbacca in the expanded universe that I really liked. They're probably gonna throw that right out the fucking window. The Imperial officer thing. Yeah. Yeah. Or like went, that would be nice if they kept that. He went through the Imperial Academy, and then they were like, "We're gonna execute this Wookiee," and he was like, "No, nah, I'm not having that." No, nah, man, fuck you. Um, I imagine that'll probably remain, just because again. Most of the stuff that takes place like around the Clone Wars has been has remained consistent. Um, but I guess that's that's all remain that all remains to be seen. I wouldn't be surprised if they show a young Han Solo in Star Wars Rebels. Now, do you think they will eventually make a spin-off movie taking place within the prequel trilogy, or do you think they're going to stay away from that era? I doubt it. They're probably going to. If anything, they'll go back further to, like, the Old Republic stuff. I mean, I could think of ideas that they could definitely do in that. I mean, I would love to see more of the actual Clone War instead of just, like, here it is beginning, here it is ending. Well, I guess you have, like, five seasons of that if you ever want to see Well, you know what? Out. That show can... can, can <laughs> yeah, but that's canon now, though, Dylan. That is that is indisputable canon. So. Well, you know what? Fuck their canon because <laughs> they're fucking assholes. Um, Disney, but, it can't be fucking canon, though, because the fucking uh, Anakin does not have a fucking apprentice in the fucking movies. Yeah, but they don't mention, not that they mention. She, she's, she left the Jedi Order by the time Episode Three came in, and also, now she's even, an adult in Star Wars Rebels. Also, can you even have an apprentice when you're not a master yet? I mean, I know uh, Obi-Wan didn't, he was just a knight, but that was sort of a weird circumstance. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the circumstances of Anakin. I mean, it could be a wartime thing though. That because a bunch of Jedi were follow, falling in the war, they just up Anakin, get becoming. I guess well a knight to get it to get a, but, to get a Padawan because well, they just kept running out of Jedi. I guess like the Gendy Tartakovsky series, they show him becoming a master. I can only assume Gendi that the Tartakovsky kind of... series is really good though. That's the difference. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when when the... so is the Clone Wars in places. I, I crap I, on it a lot. I gave but it a, I, a lot of that show. I gave really it a good. chance when it first came on. I watched like the well, first. That's what I've heard. Like. A lot of the later seasons are way better than the first few seasons. I understand that they brought uh, back Darth Maul and gave him a brother. I'm like, that's interesting, I guess. Yeah. They gave him but apparently it's leg. just like a, a lot of the – some of the best Star Wars stuff apparently is in that show. So I definitely want to delve back into it's a it. a prequel uh, anthology movie you could do. There was all this great stuff in the expanded mm-hmm. universe, like in the comics and shit, and I think there's a book about it. Of just like Darth Maul running around doing missions for Palpatine pre, um, pre-Phantom Menace. Oh, yeah, mm. yeah, you could do, like, a whole prequel, uh, like, a uh, Darth Maul Origins movie there. Prequel. Question. Let's see him get those fucking tattoos, because we know he's a Zabrak, and all members of his species do not have those tattoos. They are tattoos, in fact, not stripes. Um, mm. Question. In Star Wars, with the Sith, you have something called the Rule of Two, which right. is that there can only exist two Sith at a time. But that was Master not always the case, and not all... No, have... but it wasn't until Darth Bane. Right. Um... 
But now in the current Star Wars universe, there can only be two. Well, I don't think there's any Sith in the no. The, current it's now Star just Wars the Knights of Ren. Yeah, who are trying to bring the Sith back? Or they're, they're, they're trying to do their own thing with the dark. Zone. They're 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 Sith fanboys. Um, <laughs> well, I would imagine that the reason why, if I had to guess, the reason why they are that way is because they don't want to follow the rule of two. Uh huh. So the, that's probably why they've changed. Hey, remember that cool their... cutscene from the old Republic video game where you saw a whole bunch of Sith with red lightsabers? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, I mean the problem is it doesn't really make sense for the Sith to work as one overarching force. Like that's why the rule of two is there is because they're so power hungry that they can't have any more than two at a time. Mm. Yeah. yeah. While the uh, Jedi is all about control and or, uh, c- order and control, they're all about like I don't know, know man. It's it's chaos. more nuanced than that. In the expanded universe, which is no longer canon, because the Sith managed to actually like hold together a coherent empire for like hundreds of years. Like they ruled over this planet called Korriban. That's actually where they got the name Sith from because there was a species on that planet called the Sith and they became the lords of the Sith because originally mm-hmm. they were just called Dark Jedi because they were just Jedi that turned to the dark side. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what was the dark side prior to the Sith existing? You know, like who used it? Like, Cavemen? Yeah, man. <laughs> but I'm assuming that this is bef- like after like, like fucking Star Van- Wars Vandal Cavemen. Savage shit? Yeah. No, but okay. What did you call? I guess so. I guess they would just be called Dark Jedi then. Right? Like, what would you call a, a Dark Force user? Just a Dark Jedi? Yeah. Like, whether it's cl- it's not it's not really clear if anybody had like experimented with the dark side prior to this. But basically, what happened is there's a group of Jedi at one point who split off from the Jedi Order and start turning to the dark side. And then they have a have a confrontation with them with the mainstream Jedi Order. They get sort of boot, booted out of the Republic. They go off to this planet Korriban, which I'm pretty sure is in the Outer Rim, and they start ruling over the Sith and become the Sith Lords and sort of that's that whole chestnut. And then no. years no. later, more wars happen, and then eventually the Rule of Two happens because the Sith Empire just sort of like crumbles. And then that's why you have fucking Palpatine trying to bring it back, and fucking Mace Windu has that line where he's like, the oppression of the Sith will never return, because they really were oppressive at one point. Um, mm. Well, the, the reason why I ask is because in in the prequel trilogy, you have Darth Maul, who is the, the, the apprentice of Darth Sidious, but then you also have Darth Tyrannus, a.k.a. Count Dooku, who is also the apprentice of Darth Sidious. Do they exist at the same time? No, or I think, was it only that Darth Tyrannus was a thing after Maul got killed? I think the idea is that uh, Darth Tyrannus was um, recruited after Maul died. So does that mean it that all, he was a Jedi all, during... It all happened roughly ten years before Attack of the Clones. Count Dooku was a Jedi at one point. Yeah, he was... But was he a Jedi during the Phantom Menace? Um, no, he left the Order long before that. See, there's a cut scene out of Attack of the Clones that actually pretty explains his um, his origins and shit. Uh, it's... I have a copy of the script for that movie, because when I was younger, I got this book that was like The Art of Attack of the Clones. It's like concept art and shit. And in the back, they they included a a fucking uh, copy of the script. Um, And there's this scene where that fucking librarian that I fucking hate because she's a bitch in the the version, in the theatrical version, um, she she comes off as much less of a bitch in the uh, the script, though. And she uh, has this line where she explains to Obi-Wan... Uh, Count Dooku and like why he left the Jedi Order and shit. But anyway, he had already like left the Jedi Order sometime before he became a Sith. But he wasn't like a Sith yet. He just wasn't a Jedi anymore. And then at some point, Sidious approaches him and is like, "Yay, hey, you wanna be a Sith?" And he was like, "Yeah, cool." Okay. <laughs> okay, thanks. Want to betray um, everything you ever believed in? Fuck yeah, I do. I'm true fucking, story, bro. Yes. What what else is there to life than to betray what you believe in? I'm fucking Christopher Lee, man. I'm the Prince of Darkness. Let's do this shit. Right, exactly. Um, anyway, so, yeah, no, I, just, I was just wondering about and that. And then he got the um, second character in the movies to ever be seen throwing lightning. And throwing lightning is, like, the main reason that I would choose to be a Sith if I lived in this universe. Because, let's be honest, throwing lightning, fucking sick. It's pretty, it's pretty badass. Um, I also, I always wondered why Darth Vader couldn't do that until recently when I found out that... Apparently he's not able to channel it because of the because of the way the suit works. Yeah, he has. That's why you never see him using force lightning because if he did, it would just fry the suit. But he apparently he can do it if he really wanted to. Mm-hmm. Not only that, but I always assumed that it was harder to do it since his arms were fucking artificial. Yeah, that too. He doesn't have actual hands. Well, I'm, I'm um, assuming that when he force if chokes people. I, I feel like he's more reaching out with his mind, and the hand thing is just for show. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm also assuming that. Creating that motion with your mind is easier when you have the visual reference for it, if that makes like, sense. It helps him concentrate. It helps him sort of go, okay, this is what I'm trying to do That may very, by creating the motion. That may very well be the case. See, this is why I want 
something showing us him like adjusting to his new body. And like post Revenge of the Sith, the Sith training with him and Pal. It'd be nice almost, if we saw like, Palpatine like, fucking train him. We've never seen a Sith being trained before, fuck, unless you count the battle between Darth Vader and Luke at the end of Return of the Jedi, which I don't. And all that fucking great shit in the expanded universe, which may or may not be canon anymore. Like after Revenge of the Sith, where you see Darth Vader, classic Darth Vader, traveling around the universe and killing whatever Jedi escaped Order sixty six. I want that in a fucking movie. <laughs> Definitely, definitely. And it's it's been again, it's been touched on in in, in various stuff. Like there was even a, a mission in a Lego Star Wars where mm-hmm. you could go around with Darth Vader on Tatooine looking for Luke Skywalker and Obi Wan. Yeah, there's um my favorite image from all of like the Star Wars comics ever done is this image from that from those where it's just like Darth Vader and he's in a room surrounded by Jedi who escaped Order sixty six. And there's just like a dead Jedi lying on the floor and her hand's been chopped off. It's just an amazing image. Um. Mm. I wonder if I can find it. So, Dylan, you never answered my question. What's your favorite Star Wars thing? Yeah, I did. And oh, the did Emperor. You? The Emperor, like, as a character. He's just... Oh, okay. I fucking love okay, that old sure. fucking gear. Fair, fair enough, fair enough. All right, Andres, how'd you get into Star Wars, and what's your favorite Star Wars thing? Uh, let's see. So, I got into Star Wars... It's really hard for me to determine when exactly I got into Star Wars. I know my parents introduced them, uh, introduced the films to me when they got the VHS collection, and I went to see, my parents took me to see them in theaters when they were re-released. Uh, I think what was it ninety seven? I want to say were, the last time they were re-released. And yeah, that's, that's when the special editions were like done. Right. So I, I was pretty much exposed to Star Wars at a very early age. I can't remember a moment in my life before Star Wars, much like with Godzilla and all that stuff. Um, and you guys have shitty memories. I, I remember. I remember getting into all the shit that I loved. Well, I do <laughs> remember getting Bill's, into Godzilla. There was a I mean, point, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. There was a point in Bill's childhood where he was into nothing. Like, there's just nothing that's been with him his entire life. No, but it was just all baby shit. Like, there was a moment where I was born as a person, and before that, it was just me going, "Yeah, Barney's for kids. I'll watch Barney." But the moment I was introduced to Godzilla, mm-hmm. I was just like, "Oh, I'm a I'm a person now." <laughs> uh. Well, that was the moment that my nuts dropped. <clears throat> so yeah, I did get into God, uh, Godzilla, into Star Wars, and I we already talked about Godzilla. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, and, I found the image that I was talking about. I know, I just saw it. It's badass. I fucking love it. And it makes let's... me wet. Oh, I see. <laughs> cool. Okay. You can keep so... that inside if you want to, you know, Dylan. You don't have to let it all out. You're not a Sith member yet. And let's see, my favorite thing from Star Wars. Very difficult. If you had asked me this question like 10 years ago, or not 10 years ago, if you'd asked me this question shortly after Phantom Menace came out, I would have been like, two-headed lightsaber, bitch! Um, Andres, what you're thinking, uh-huh. this thing I just thought of, so you know how one of the massive parts of the Sith philosophy is that passion overrules rationality? Can we, can we talk about Where? how the Sith philosophy is actually much more applicable to real life? Oh, definitely! <laughs> I would talk... If I was in the Star Wars universe, I would be a Sith. Um, Fuck yeah. Because the Jedi are just basically priests with weapons, and that sounds scary. Because um, even, <laughs> they, even they even go into it in like the expanded universe, and not every Sith that's ever existed has been all like, let's like genocide everyone. Like, well, no, what I like about the expanded universe is that there are gray area Jedi, which is like mm-hmm. probably where most people would fall into, where it's like you have, you have like bounty hunters who are trained as Jedi. Like, that's awesome. Yeah, there's even there's even hints that Qui-Gon might have been a, a gray Jedi. That makes perfect sense, by the way, given the way he acts in that movie. <laughs> there's, the thing to bring up, there's that line where Obi-Wan's like, you would be a master if you just follow the ca- council, and Qui-Gon's like, you have much to learn. <laughs> but the reason why I bring that up is because you got passion and lust goes into that as well. There's a lot of, like, there's a lot of sexual undertones with the Sith, where it's like the Jedi don't are, are not allowed to to love, although it's never explicitly said that they can't have sex. It's just that they can't get married. Um, I'm, like, assuming I'm assuming, that yeah, they can't have sex because that's just George Lucas' way of keeping it PG or PG-13. Yeah, but it's also like Obi-Wan has a lover, though, in the Clone Wars, though. <sighs> so I'm assuming that uh... they can at the very least have sex. Um, but anyway, so the reason why I ask oh. is because, again, Sith are all about passion, yet the two major Sith characters that we've seen... Darth Vader and Darth Sidious both probably don't have dicks. Think about it. Or if they do, they're not usable. Darth Vader definitely doesn't have a dick. No, burned off, gone. Or, or gone forever. Darth Sidious. That's why he's so frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. It's definitely not because he murdered his wife, lost his only children, 
lost his identity, lost his fucking the entire world, lost his body. So you want to know who really defeated Darth Vader? It was Han Solo when he fucked his daughter. <laughs> Mm. Interesting. <laughs> there is no better way to defeat a man. <laughs> <laughs> by fucking his daughter. That's how you declare dominance over him. Bill never habits. have a daughter. What, what is that supposed to mean, Andres? <laughs> wow, that was fucking awesome. Andres awful. was like, if you ever have a daughter, I'm going to fuck her. <laughs> that's, that's what I got. Where it was just no, like, I want, that's, I, how, I, I, that's I, how I will establish I'm dominance plan over that out Bill from the beginning. by fucking his daughter. <laughs> Wow, I'm keeping my kids the hell away from you, you sick motherfucker. I never, I never, I never was meant to imply that I was going to do something like that, you know? I'm just saying that I could. I'm just saying you have a lot, I'm of, just en- just... I'm just saying you have a lot of enemies, Bill. The last time you met Andres was the learner. Now he is the master. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, by the anyway, way, my I, favorite I, thing is Star Wars. And this may be stupid, but ever since I was a little kid, I always loved the AT-AT walkers. Oh, okay. Are... okay you guys and, and, it, it, and it was because of the Battle for Hoth, that was the reason why I always watched uh, um, and The Empire Strikes Back more than any other uh, Star Wars film, it was because of that of the Hoth battle and the robots and everything leading up to that. I was always <laughs> fascinated was like, by hey, the visual the giant appeal. Robot. Giant robots! Yeah, indeed. And yeah, so, how shocking that you picked the giant mechs of the Star Wars universe. <laughs> Better shape like you know, like, but I'm, just now, I'm not sure. Do the AT-AT walkers, do they, do, would they actually work, like, does that design make sense in a real Fuck life? Fuck no! <laughs> Are you kidding me? Do you see how slow they move? Yeah, yeah, That's how easy they could turn in a, in, a, in a fucking, in a fucking battle situation. I mean, There's no way. I mean, it, it, like it makes more terrain. sense. Like it makes more sense to put wheels or treads on them and put more guns on them outside of the two little of guns. Of course on it head. does. But the problem, yeah, the problem with wheels. But the, but the problem with wheels on ice, Andres. You ever you ever drive in? Of course you haven't. You're in California. <laughs> wheels on ice can be a problem. It, it might be that having legs just works better in 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 that environment. Possibly. Yeah, but if, yeah, but if you but if you if you see all this, they use those things everywhere. Though it's not in the wrong. movies, you don't see them use them. They don't, you see ah, uh, that see, would change in episode seven. You see the ATSTs um, on yeah. the door, but you never see the ATATs again. Uh, but if again, if you play Star Wars Battlefront and they show more of the Battle of Endor, they did use ATATs there. Well, you know what? Fuck it. Um. So, which doesn't make any sense, because how the fuck did they fit them in the fucking and then forest? In the Clone Wars, you had those like proto ATSTs, where it was like mini ATSTs. Yeah, but, like, the clone yeah, yeah. driving it was exposed, and I was like, "That's that's not smart." Yeah, how come? Because when I would play Battlefront Two back in the day, I would just be like sneak up behind the motherfuckers and shoot the clone in the back, you know, like a strategist. Mm. Speaking of, that is probably not. That's, like, one of my favorite Star Wars things. And when I said Star Wars things, I meant, like, actual, like, games and specific movies and stuff. I didn't mean mm. characters, but that's that's fine. That, that's fine that you guys pick those. Well, the, if I had to pick if, that... If, if I did have to pick... Oh, I'll let you go. I'm probably going to have to go with either Han Solo or Jango Fett. I really like both those characters. Um, despite the fact that people hate Jango Fett, I, I like him. I think his armor is cooler looking yeah, than taken out like a little bitch, but, I mean, it was just Sam Jackson, so I understand. Yeah, I mean, it was... Exactly! He 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 had the ability to kill every motherfucker in the room, and he picked fucking Jango Fett. I mean, so you really want to know how badass, of, uh, how much of a badass Mace Windu is? There's this one episode of the Gindy Tartakovsky Clone Wars cartoon where he's just like one man taking on like a horde of super battle droids, and there's like this weird super weapon that keeps like pounding the ground, and he fucking wins that battle because he's Mace fucking Windu. Word. So I love Jango Fett. I, I love the dual gun thing. That's the thing that I love. It's just mm-hmm. like when when he fights Obi Wan and he starts fucking whipping out the dual blasters. That was awesome. Got the missile on the back. That was also cool. Um, I was Jango Fett for Halloween that year because of how much I liked that movie. Same um, here, actually. Was, oh, really? Was, yeah, I was, was Jango Fett. There was also a line in um in Revenge of the Sith, or I think it was Revenge of the Sith. There was a line in one of the prequel movies that actually like implied that while Yoda is, like, the wisest of the Jedi Council, like, in terms of sheer power, like, Mace Windu was, like, the highest in that scale. Because, like, mm-hmm. there's a line somewhere where Obi-Wan's like, he's as wise as Master Yoda and as powerful as Master Windu. And I was like, oh, shit. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's, that's interesting. Oh, Yoda, too. I fucking love Yoda. Like, I want a Yoda spinoff movie so bad. I don't know what it would be about. I don't even know if it would work. It's just him dicking around in the swamp. <laughs> <laughs> 
no, no, you, you, you need to. Two hours of him talking like that. No, no, no. But gonna... Here's the thing: if you if you watch the original Star Wars movies, he barely talks backwards. Yeah, yeah they, they kind do, of exaggerated that. They do exaggerate it in the prequels, and I guess that I'm assuming that that's the way his race is supposed to talk. And true. as he as he was off isolated by himself for a long time, that that sort of died off. If I had to explain, or it. you know, George Lucas can't write for shits. That's probably more George of the Lucas always had this really weird thing where he very where he intentionally kept the details but behind Yoda's race a secret. You only ever see one other member of his race in the films. There's a there's a female member who's on the Jedi Council in Phantom really? Menace. Her name yeah her name is like Yaddle or something something. Yeah 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 she's hideous. Um, <laughs> you know Phantom. What do you Menace. suppose a young Yoda would look like? There's been a bunch of different theories. There's there's some that are terrifying, and there are some that are. I mean, I guess it would be. I guess it would be the same, but less wrinkly, and that shock of white hair that he has, you know, that like doc brown hair, wouldn't be as yeah. white. Like it would be kind of like, I don't know. I imagine he would have like he, the agility of like Goku in Dragon Ball, like Kid Goku. Like I remember, I remember there was this one like a uh, parody uh, comic where. They make fun of the whole hating, like uh, Anakin Skywalker comes back as a Force ghost, but he's young again. And Obi Wan's like, "Hey, how come you're young? Well, everyone can be however they used to look like." So then Obi Wan's like, "Hey, I'm young again." And then like Yoda becomes like fucking like Fabio with long flowing hair and muscular and a muscular body. Yeah, I saw that too. That was really funny. <laughs> that wasn't that wasn't in the how it should have ended for Jedi uh, Return of the Jedi, was it? No, Did no, this, sound... is a, this is a comic, a web comic. Oh, I might have seen this somewhere because that sounds familiar. Mm, mm. Yeah, that does. I think I've seen that before too. Um, okay, all right. Interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. I do have to say, so, my one of my favorite um, video games in the in the Star Wars franchise. Something I always grew up with was the Star Wars trilogy arcade game, where you would oh, yeah. you, know, you the the whole game you play it with like a single joystick with a button. And there were, like, um, on-rail shooter segments. There were segments where you were, like, piloting uh, either, like, a speeder bike on Endor or uh, any of the ships in the Battle for there Hoth. Was a, or a in lightsaber the lightsaber duel level. Yeah, like... and then you were, there was a, even a boss battle, a lightsaber duel, a boss battle duel with uh, Boba Fett. He's flying the air, so you got to deflect all his lasers. There was this... There was a copy of that in this like shitty pizza joint that we have in my town back in the yeah. day, and it became like a Sunday tradition. I would go there, eat shitty pizza, play that game, and then go home and watch Jurassic Park. That was my life. <laughs> so specific. That was my life for a while. <laughs> we had that <laughs> at a Chuck E. Cheese at our Chuck E. Cheese, I believe, and that's where I would play it all the time whenever I got the chance. Jurassic Park I... is another franchise that like the arcade game was very. Oh yeah, yeah, the one that starts off with the T Rex chase, and then eventually you're running, you're like running your jeep through a bunch of Dilophosauruses and, tr- and Triceratops and Pteranodons. Yeah. Yeah, they did another one of those arcade games for for Jurassic Park three, and it yeah. may be the only good thing to come out of that movie. Um, yeah, I remember the one for Jurassic Park. I also remember one for The Lost World was also very popular. I don't think I, I don't um, remember if I ever got to play that one. But this is yeah, it was. I rem- that, that was the one I remember playing first, actually. Um, mm. But uh, I also, but I also remember playing uh, when the Phantom Menace came out. They put out a, uh, a uh, like a like a like a starfighter type of game for uh, for the space battle at the end of that movie. So I remember playing. Oh, that yeah, I played that. I played that. And then yeah. I also played. There was this like pod racing game that I had on Nintendo 64, and it was the most frustrating fucking game I think I've ever played to this fucking day. Yeah. Because you I also cannot the- win a fucking race. I also had one of the Star Wars plug-and-play games, and that was all fucking, like... It, it was based on Revenge of the Sith mm-hmm. and Attack of the Clones, mainly. Um, and Did he it see, was, really was it one of the ones that JonTron covered on Star Yeah, Starcade? yeah, yeah, it was. Um, nice. the one with the, it was the one with the lizard running, and that was the one that I played the most, because it was the only one that actually worked. The rest uh-huh. of them were just, like... They were uncontrollable. They were just, like... <laughs> they, were, they had a mind of their own. You couldn't control them. Like, the one where you played as Obi-Wan mm-hmm. was impossible to play. Like, you just... It was impossible to do what you had to do, so um, I remember playing that as well. Um, what other Star Wars games were there? Uh, again, you had Lego Star Wars one and two, which I loved as well. And um, I, I, I grew up with the uh, Lego Star Wars: The Complete Saga, and never mm-hmm. touched Lego Star Wars three: The Clone Wars. I also, oh, I never, oh, I forgot that that was even a thing. Um, and then there was also, uh, oh shit, what was it? 
Um, oh, then there was, of course, the Revenge of the Sith video game, which did not have to exist, because that was what Battlefront 2 was. Um, I remember playing I, a little... Seriously, <laughs> why the fuck did they even bother making a video game based specifically on Revenge of the Sith? All of the major story points are in Battlefront 2 story mode. Because I don't know. What got the to fuck? Have but, but I do remember that that game... I enjoyed the lightsaber uh, lightsaber fighting in that game. Like that game, yeah. that game was better if you wanted to have a lightsaber fight. If you wanted, to yeah, because the lightsaber controls in Battlefront are crap. Yeah, they're pretty. They're pretty bad. Uh, it's not designed see. for that. Though. I played a little bit of the Force Unleashed, the first one when it when it first came out. I, I remember the first one. Never played the sequel. Yeah, I heard the first one. I heard, those those games would be really good if God of War didn't exist. <laughs> um, I heard the second one suffered from major problems because you're basically in god mode all the time, which made combat kind of monotonous and boring after a while. Also, isn't, isn't, the the, uh, isn't the plot of the second game that you're a clone of the kid from the first game? Yeah. Yeah, because Starkiller dies in the first one. Um, well, it depends on the ending you choose. Right, right. But I guess the official canon ending is that he does die because he sacrifices his life and paved the way for the creation of the Rebel Alliance. I always preferred the Sith ending where he, like gets turned into, like, a pseudo-Darth Vader, and he has, like, this badass fucking armor. Mm. Anyway. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Um, Remember that weird moment in time when Starkiller, Yoda, and Darth Vader were characters in Soul Calibur Four? Yeah, I do remember that. I remember seeing a poster for Soul Calibur Four that was, like, Darth Vader and Yoda, and it was, like, pick your side. And I was like, well, you we don't really get to pick, because it's just based on whatever system you have. So. And then you have to, buy, get... you have to buy the other character as DLC. Yeah, if you had the Xbox 360, you got Yoda, and if you had the PS3, you got Darth Vader. So mm-hmm. I was personally like, fuck yeah for PS3, because I want Darth Vader. Hell yeah. And then I never, ever got Soul Calibur before, because I played that game at a friend's house, and I was like, wow, this is garbage. <laughs> if you're going to put Star Wars characters in a fighting game, I would love to see like them in like Mortal Kombat. Because imagine oh some of the God, brutal... Oh my God, that would be amazing. Some of the it brutal... would never, ever happen, it, but it would be amazing. In fact, like, I don't think we've imagine, ever the Emperor, a... imagine the Emperor having a lightning fight with Raiden. And fucking... oh. imagine, a, imagine the Emperor's fatality. Yes. He just like mm. shocks you to death. And you turn into like a skeleton and shit. But just imagine like like for mature rate like quality Star Wars murders. Like it'd be amazing. Like, I don't think we've Darth ever, Vader force choke ever. you and then like fucking rip your spine out with the force. It'd be great. <laughs> well, it's like he would he would fucking cut off all your limbs and then choke you and then burn you <laughs> just to make you feel the pain that he went through. Yoda would like slice open your carcass and climb inside it like a tauntaun. <laughs> oh my fucking god! He uses the up. force to burst his way out like Jed Jaguar when he bursted out of Orga. Yes. Mm-hmm. Or, or, Obi-Wan Kenobi's just chopping off I just want a Mortal Kombat-style fighting game in the Star Wars universe. Never going to fucking happen, especially now that Disney owns it, those fucking pieces of shit. But, yeah, they're not going to... No. <laughs> um, I, I think the reason have... Disney wanted to buy Star Wars is they like watched Phantom Menace, and they're like, hey, that's an anti-Semitic stereotype. I'm down for this. <laughs> 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 Watto's going to get his own fucking spin-off series. <laughs> yeah. Walt Disney's favorite character. <laughs> uh, what... Has there? I don't think there's. Has that there ever? Just don't work on me. Only money. Has there ever been a proper Star Wars game where where chopping uh, any sort of enemy with a lightsaber automatically like slices them up? No, they can't do no. that because then the game would be too easy. Yeah, it's, but it depends on who you're fighting, though. I mean, you kind. If you were just you get a whacking little... them around at stormtroopers, it would depend on what armor they're wearing. Well, like you normally, like with a video game, they would have like a health bar, and then once you kill them, it's like there's no real like slicing up fatality death well, I mean, animation. In, in the Force Unleashed, like if you're killing a stormtrooper or like slicing a droid in half, that shit yeah. happens. But then, like if you're fighting a boss, nah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's like video game logic right there. Because in actual, because in actual, you know, Star Wars movies, it's like a lightsaber duel is essentially a game of who can hit who first. Yeah. Um, but in, mm-hmm. in the whereas game, with video games, you're just like whacking each other. Whoever whacks each other enough. It's more. It's more like a Dragon Ball Z fight where it's like just put the other guy down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, you know that like fan explanation for why there's like sparks when Power Rangers get hit. Yeah. I almost had to like theorize that Star Wars works the same way in the video game universe, <laughs> where like you have like a force shield around your body, and they have to yeah. hit it enough times to kill you. That would make sense. That's um, legit, bro. Andres, did you get together a bunch of Star Wars news like we talked about? Yes, I did. 
All right, so we better do that now because we're already really far in. So what do you say we just jump right into Star Wars related news? Okay, and I also found the the comic, the little web comic I sent. I put uh, put in the yes. little description. Yes, yeah, gotcha. Andres, is one of your news stories that uh, that fan theory about Jar Jar? <laughs> Oh no, I didn't. I haven't. I didn't get it uh, yet. Oh, good, because I'm sick of talking about this. <laughs> We're hearing about it. Okay, quick little bit of news since. No- but this is currently in a galaxy far, far away. Get it? Because it's not a long. It's it's current because it's news. No, nah, Bill. No. Nah. Andres, go ahead. It's Fuck all you guys. Okay, time. start with the start with the one that we care about, care the least uh, about. Star Wars. Re- Star Wars Rebels has been renewed for season three. Yay. 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 I just saw like 10 seconds of an episode the other day, and I was like, not feeling this. I'm going to go back and, re- and, and watch it at some point, because what I have seen, seen of it was pretty was pretty interesting, but uh, it didn't grab me. Is Rebel like season, main... le- season 1 at least on Netflix? I don't know. Not that I'm familiar with. I could be wrong, though. Uh, the Clone uh, Wars um, used to be on Netflix. Is it still? The Clone Wars is still on Netflix, yeah. Well, because they have, they have an entire season that's exclusive to them, so it's going to stay on there. Oh, yeah, that's right, because Disney, when Disney 86 did, right, they were like, we're going to finish it on Netflix. Yeah, well, there was a bunch of, there, there was a web series that finished up, up the the, uh, the series, and they just put that on Netflix, so. Did they ever show the part that must inevitably happen due to logic, or that fucking character that they made up for the show, you know, Anakin's Apprentice gets killed during Order well, 66? Well, Star no, Wars Rebels, she, there's, apparently Star Wars Rebels is building up to an eventual confrontation between Ahsoka Tano and Darth Vader. Yeah, cause she's still alive in Rebels. She's the main character in that show. Um, and um, also, apparently, yeah, Darth Vader's going to have a much larger role for Season 3, and apparently Sarah Michelle Gellar is playing a villain. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, But yeah, so, I don't know. That's interesting, I guess. That's cool. Um, I'm glad that that's still going. It's it's good to have a Star Wars show that people like. I mean, everything I hear about that show seems pretty solid. I haven't mm. heard anybody crap about crap on it that wasn't Dylan. Um, so <laughs> because it's different and I, scary. Because it's different and scary. Main so. character has blue hair. Thinks he's fucking Bulma or something. I don't know. Man. He, thinks, he thinks he's Bulma. He thinks he he's thinks, some. He's in. He thinks he's in some fucking animu or whatever bullshit Japanese bullshit is that is. I just don't like the way Fuck him. I just. <laughs> Okay. Um, I I just don't like the way the lightsabers look in that show. They look really weird. They look like how they looked like in the very very early stages of A New Hope, mm. I think that's, where it's like I think they don't, they look kind of like just basic swords. Uh-huh. I think that was actually the intention. They were like, we're gonna make it. I don't like I don't like it though. They were like, we're gonna make this show look like the old school concept art because yeah, we can. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Like all the, the blockier animation lends itself to that as well. Which again, it's cool that they did that, but I just don't like the way the lightsabers. The problem look. with doing Star Wars, they don't look as cool as the normal lightsabers. The problem with doing Star Wars as an animated series is you have to like invent new villains, and then you kind of get into this part point where you're like, "Are we violating the rule of two here?" Whoa, this like, light this lightsaber looks pretty trippy looking. Mm. Like, I'm assuming they have to like find creative ways to like write around it and be like, "No, this doesn't yes. violate the rule of two. But it kind of does. That's yeah, secret, secret apprentices and all that. And also, you, you don't have to be a Sith to use the dark side, though, right? No, I guess not, technically. It's like in The Force Unleashed. Like, you find out that yeah, the Emperor has, like, this class of Imperial Guards, but they're, like, wear black and they have Force powers and they have, like, red lightsabers on the ends of their staffs. And I'm like, Emperor, you're getting really close to violating the Rule of Two, but, but you're staying just within the limits. But they are Sith, so I guess... Breaking the rules is sort of their thing. I guess. Um, the rule of two is mainly there just so that way there's nobody to compete with. But the problem with the rule of two is also that you're you're raising somebody to compete with you because you're training them to be as powerful, if not more powerful, than you are. I mean, so he kind of abuses the rule of two anyway. He uses it as a way of grabbing power. I mean, there's that scene in uh, Revenge of the Sith where he's like, I will have a new apprentice, one far younger and more powerful. And General Grievous is like, all right. I guess I'm fucked. Um, oh, and then because you also have General Grievous, who isn't a Force user, but he still uses lightsabers, though. Yeah, but so. you, you see, again, he's not a Force user. He's only been trained in uh, your Jedi arts by Count no, but that, Dooku. No, but that's what I mean, though, is that he, he counts as a villain, but he's not a Force user. So you, you can get away with do, doing threatening non-Sith characters that also use aspects of Sith and Jedi weaponry, like, you know, they use, some of them use the Force, some of them use lightsabers. Every now and then you can be like, here's a villain who's a Mandalorian. I know we said there were only, like, two left, but nah. Fuck you! <laughs> now, I wonder if, if Star Wars will ever touch upon, like, Force users that aren't Jedi nor Sith. 
they're basically telekinetic. They're dudes with telekinetic powers. I kind of get the feeling that we're getting into that with the new trilogy, because Kylo Ren is not a, a traditional Sith, nor is he a Jedi. He is something different. True, but I mean, I mean, like someone who isn't like a lightsaber wielder. Oh, well, see, they've had, someone that, who ha- they've had Sorry, that. In the, uh, they've had that in the expanded universe before. Ah. There was, okay. like, there was well, like, obviously, yeah. They're called magicians. <laughs> there was this bitch that uh, Darth Maul fought in a comic once, and she was like some kind of a... They were called something witches. I don't remember. Mm-hmm. But they're like people who use the dark side, but like aren't like Sith, and they don't carry lightsabers and shit. Mm-hmm. They just basically use all the like magical elements of the dark side. So like a lot of lightning throwing, a lot of, a lot of pushing mm-hmm. shit around. No fancy swords. Mm-hmm. I threw a rock at him! Like at one point the Jedi would have been like that because um, there's this I, there's this whole history about how the lightsaber evolved. Like originally they just used regular swords and infused them with force, force energy, and eventually they invented fucking lightsabers. Like there's, there's it's this whole thing, ancient Star Wars history that's very interesting and probably no longer canon. Um, again, I think they're leaving most of that stuff untouched because they just don't care. Again, most of the new Star Wars stuff is all going to be around the original trilogy or after. So. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming that they'll pretty much leave that stuff well, on touch because they don't think anybody cares. Well, George Lucas' original idea because originally there was a time when George Lucas was like, I'm going to do two new trilogies. One of them's going to be a prequel trilogy, and the other one's going to be a sequel trilogy. And he only did one of those, and he was like, fuck the other one. Well, he said fuck the other one because everybody fucking hated the prequels. Yeah. He would have definitely gone ahead and made those other movies if people would have liked the prequels. And his plans for this for the prequel trilogy changed drastically based on people's reaction to like Phantom Menace. Was Phantom Menace as universally hated back when on on release as it is now or was it like no, was people there that loved it when it first came yeah, out. Yeah, there was that moment where people were kind of in denial and didn't want to admit that the movie they've been waiting for for years was crap. Which kind of happens anytime a new like franchise things comes comes out where for something that hasn't been around in a while. Mm-hmm. Like there were some people who were who, who were that way about 2014 where they were like they were like it's perfect because we haven't had a Godzilla thing in a while. Yeah. So it's you, perfect you think it'll, just because of that. You think I mean, it'll right now, Phantom Menace is my second favorite of the prequel trilogy, which isn't saying much. You like it uh, more than Attack of the Clones? Yeah, because it's not as boring. Attack of the Clones is so fucking boring until you That's get to true. the end. That's fair. Yeah. The last act is is full of shit, and then the shit on Kamino is interesting. But a lot of it's just like Anakin and Padme hanging out on Naboo, talking about politics, and Anakin is hinting at at like communism or not communism, the other one, fascism, and Padme's like nah, and that's like a whole conversation that goes on. And there's like cut scenes, very riveting. <laughs> there's cut scenes where Padme like introduces him to her fucking family and shit. Like it's just it's just too much. It's the, the things that people hated about the prequel trilogy are at the most in that fucking movie, in Attack of the Clones. Easily the weakest of the three, in my opinion, because at least sure. at least Phantom Menace is entertaining and has some cool shit in it, like Darth Maul and fucking uh, Qui-Gon Jinn. Liam Neeson is a Jedi. I mean, you can't beat that. True, true. Fair enough. Um, I, I just have I have more nostalgia for Attack of the Clones than I, than I do for... Uh, Phantom Menace. I didn't see Phantom Menace until I was a little bit older, so mm-hmm. um, I have a little bit of a warm place in my heart for Attack of the Clones. Not a, not a very, not a very warm place, mind you, but enough. And like I saw Attack of the Clones before I like became like a huge Christopher Lee fan, like in general, like because it, at the time I didn't realize. So it didn't even have that to save it for you. Yeah, like at the time I didn't realize that he was the same guy who was my favorite version of Dracula. Like I didn't make that connection because I was a stupid child. But then I saw, but then the thing that actually made me like that actor was fucking Saruman from Lord of the Rings. He's fucking great in those movies. And then he gets the shaft in the third one, but whatever. He gets the shaft in the third prequel Star Wars film, too. Yeah, he gets the shaft a lot. <laughs> he has a bad habit of getting the shaft. Um, but anyway, so Andres, why don't you move on to the next story? Okay, about? so the next news uh, revolves around the supposed controversy with... Did with uh, the whole uh, Disney trying to take, oh, trying to shut down any production on future Slave Leia merchandise, and how this uh, Fuck controversy. You, <laughs> all, Star Wars how this, fans got to get their rocks off too, you. <laughs> and how this controversy all started with like this one father who went all ballistic and crazy, being offended because it's like, how can my daughter, you know, go to Toys R Us and then sees this very provocative now, imagery? You know, what here. Happened? you know what happened? His daughter asked him about it, and he didn't know what to fucking tell her. He's one of these lazy fucking parents who doesn't want to fucking explain shit to their children. And, and it's this perfectly mm-hmm. innocuous explanation. It's like Princess Leia was kidnapped by a bad man, and he dressed her like that. 
but then she like killed him at the end. Like like people act like it's like sexist and shit. It's actually a pretty empowering story of a woman who oh, yeah, definitely like, and then kills yeah, yeah. her flavor with the chains of her own oppression. Like you can't yeah, get absolutely. more fucking female positive than that. Yeah, like, like Jabba tried to like break her. Like he literally like and figuratively, emotionally, and emotionally and literal and physically stripped her, attempted to strip her of her dignity. And, you know, try to bring her to her lowest, you know, to her breaking point. And yet she overcame that. And she's like, nah, I ain't having that shit. Yeah, she gets to finally do the one cool thing she ever did in the entire trilogy and, like, kill him. And now she, and now Carrie Fisher acts like she's, like, ashamed of it. Like, she told the no, fucking no, no. girl. No, 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 here's what, here's what She happened. told the fucking girl who's in the new trilogy, don't let them put you in a metal bikini. I'm like, it's fucking <laughs> bullshit. Well, here's, here's what Carrie Fisher said about the whole controversy. Um, an expert, here's an expert from her comments. She said, the father who flipped out about it, uh, what am I going to tell my kid about why she's in that outfit? Tell them that a giant slug captured me and forced me to wear that stupid outfit. And then I killed him because I didn't like it. And then I took it off backstage. How about telling his daughter that the character is wearing that outfit? Not because she's chosen to wear it. She's been forced to wear it. She's a prisoner of a giant testicle who has a lot of saliva going on. And she does not want to wear that thing. It's ultimately that chain, which you're now indicating is some sort of accessory to S and M, that is used to kill the giant saliva testicle. That's asinine. I've never been described as a giant testicle. It's my new favorite way of describing him. And we have Carrie Fisher to thank for that. Yes, I haven't thanked her for much in my lifetime, but but now now she's given now she's made her contribution to humanity. Calling calling a slug a testicle. <laughs> yeah. Carrie Fisher calling, story. Calling out on a stupid father's bullshit. That, that needs to be the name of her biography. Calling a slug a testicle. The Carrie Fisher story. I ki- or how about I kill the I kill I kill the testicle slug. Or how about Carrie drug Fisher's? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one might not go over so well. But you know, Possibly. just trying to be just trying to be truthful in art. Um, now we're kind of vamping because Bill's not here. I know. Speaking of thing, I love that joke. That did you ever saw Red Letter Media's like take on the Star Wars holiday special? No, I've seen their fucking Phantom Menace review that everybody else on the internet has seen, but I haven't seen a whole lot more of their stuff. Mm. Uh, I, I, I highly recommend you check out that guy. They're, those guys' stuff. They're really funny, and um, they want they want like I think it was like two last year or the year before they talked about the Star Wars special, and they talked about how. Uh, Luke Skywalker, uh, Mark Hamill, he was in a bad accident, so when you see him in the Christmas special, you can tell he's got, like, a whole lot of makeup on his face and how his hair is kind of, like, combed to where it's covering his forehead. And they yeah. just figured, they theorized that the reason why is because, like, maybe he must have accidentally spit, that's, that was during Carrie Fisher's, like, like extreme, like, coke habit, so maybe, like... Mark Hamill accidentally like spilled coke on his face, and that's when <laughs> Carrie Fisher mauled his his face off. Like, Aah! or what if we're seeing Mark Hamill's face, the way it is seen through the eyes of a drugged up Carrie Fisher? <laughs> Possibly, brilliant. Wait, so, so, even even so, after that, in like the the next movies, like his face had healed up some, but you could tell he looked a little different. Oh yeah, definitely, especially with in when you look when you go into. Uh, I'm not sure if it's age or if it's that accent he had, but he definitely looks a lot different in uh, Return of the Jedi. I don't think it's age, because, I mean, not that much time had passed, really. I mean, you're going from 1977 to, what was it, like, 81, 83, something like that? Uh Uh-huh. So, I mean, yeah, some time had passed, but not enough to where he should be, like, looking different and shit. I Mm -hmm. I wouldn't think. I mean, uh, but that's subjective. People age differently than others, so. Right, right. But if he was aging really fast, then he slowed down now because he doesn't look that much older now. Like, oh, yeah, definitely. It, I mean, if anything, he's actually looked better since he in, since the days of him voicing the Joker and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mark yeah, Hamill shows up on set. He's had this accident. His face is all messed up, and he's like, "You want to know how I got these scars?" <laughs> and they say to him, "Yeah, car accident. We already know." He's like, "Oh, well, fuck you." I think the and super scene all- made him nervous. <laughs> And now he, he now he's like, you want to know how I was able to slim down and get into this stormtrooper outfit again? Because that was a thing. He dressed up as a stormtrooper for as like for this like charity event, and he went out in public, and no one knew it was Mark Hamill in that suit. 
You see the picture of him on the internet where like there's a newspaper headline that's like, "Where is Luke Skywalker?" And he's oh, reading it. Oh, I saw that. Yes, I know. Bill shared that on Facebook, and Bill's like, great. "You cheeky bastard." That was great. <laughs> Love some cheeky Mark Hamill. There is no better Mark Hamill than cheeky Mark Hamill. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. And Bill is still not back. So should we move on to the last story without him? Yeah, yeah. So what do you think about the Jar Jar Gungan, or the, the Jar Jar is a Sith theory, Andres? Well, I guess it makes sense, I guess, since he brought about the existence of the of the Empire. Yeah, look, they're, they're, the whole time I was watching, did I share with you the video that I watched about it? I, th- the whole hey, th- I think so, but I probably haven't gone around to seeing it. The whole time I watched it, I was like, this is a stretch, but there were two parts that kind of kind of convinced me that is mm-hmm. and sh- there are shots in phantom minutes where he's standing behind people and as right. they're saying his their lines he's kind of mouthing along with them and it's like is he fucking mind controlling that bitch and then like <laughs> the other thing they said in the video that i was like whoa that actually kind of makes sense well first of all there's a quote from george lucas where he's like my plans for certain characters got greatly changed because of people's reactions to phantom menace i had big plans for certain characters that did not happen and it's like, okay, well, what's the one thing people complain the most about in Phantom Menace? Jar Jar Binks. So if he had originally want, had to had a bigger role in George's mind, I can see him getting cut down substantially because of the f- fan reaction. And then there's like this book series by Isaac mm-hmm. Asimov. I forget what it's called. But apparently in that, there's a character similar to Jar Jar Binks. Mm-hmm. But like at the end of the series, he winds up like being the ruler of the entire galaxy because he's fucking like been mind controlling people the whole time. And I was like, holy shit. So he was pretending Isaac to be the Asimov whole, the whole... wrote a Star Wars thing? No, 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 no. He did a he did a trilogy that I forget what it's called, but but basically part of the Jar Jar theory is that George Lucas was taking inspiration from this one character in this as Isaac Asimov thing. Oh, okay, got you. Sorry, I walked in late to that. I was just in the bathroom. <laughs> right. So he was all he was just playing the fool the entire time. That's the theory. Yeah. Like this innocuous innocuous character in the background who at the end turns out to be like fucking worse than Darth Plagueis. And I'm like, alright. I think that would have been pretty badass if that would have turned out to be true. Like mm-hmm. He would have had to die in Revenge of the Sith, or else it would have been like, well, why isn't he the Emperor in the next three movies? But it still would have been an interesting reveal. It would have been awesome to see fucking Anakin just slice his fucking head off. <laughs> some of the other... <laughs> fucking make sushi out of him. Isn't some of the other things that people are using to uh, substantiate the theory are really stupid? Like, what about that crazy jump he does into that lake? And I'm like, well, that could be Force Powers, or it could just be that his race is very agile. You know. Which, that seems to be the case if you look at them in the fight with the droids at the end of The Phantom Menace. They seem to be pretty agile. I mean, like, Jar Jar's, like, jumping and bouncing on top of all these different tanks and shit. Yeah, they actually turn so out... I'm assuming be, that that's a thing that they can do. They actually turn out to be a pretty good warrior race in that movie. Like, Jar Jar's mm-hmm. the only one who's in that incompetent. The rest of them are like... But even still, he ends up taking out fucking, like, just dozens of droids, because he's just a fucking idiot, and he just falls into and see, that's it. Part that's, of why the, people that's, think that, that's why people think that he's a Force user, yeah. That's part of the theory, too. It's like, is he really just this clumsy, or is he using the Force to well, make it also seems to be. It's kind of like the, the uh, like, drunken fist kung fu, where you pretend to be drunk and an idiot, but in reality, you're in complete control. Mm, exactly. But there's also, like... The use of luck in Star Wars also seems to be something that's inherent in the Force. Like Luke Skywalker, always lucky, always gets out of the right, always gets out of this, out of the situations and everything. Like you know, Anakin Skywalker, except for the time where he got burned by lava. Um, Obi Wan Kenobi always seems to get out of the situation, except for that time he got killed by his apprentice. Um, but luck seems to be a, a huge aspect of the Force. So that would make sense that if the reason why Jar Jar is so fucking lucky that he's able to survive all three movies is because he's a Force user, so... But does he survive all three movies, though? Because Well, we don't know what happens to him at the end of Episode 3. Has there ever been an expanded a... universe that detailed whatever became, what happened to Jar Jar? I think they I did know, at some point, but I don't remember really know that, what you got to remember that Jar Jar is the one that, like, says, let's all, let's all hail to our brand new Supreme Chancellor Palpatine. He names him the Emperor of the Galaxy, so... Yeah. I would love to find out what happened to him after that. Like, I would imagine that. I, all I think Robot Chicken like, may have made fun of that, where it's like the Emperor, he's about to die, so he decides, you know what? I'm going to call, I'm going to kind of try to call, contact everyone as I'm falling to my death and try to make amends with everyone. And he calls Jar Jar, he's like, I'm sorry for ma- ma- manipulating you into helping me create the Empire. He's like, oh, yeah, you some make me, you, uh, you some treat me so bad. I, I forgive you. And then you see he's just like living a life of luxury ever since the empire came into power oh my god he's like oh yeah you totally took advantage of me <laughs> exactly that's amazing 
Um, but yeah, that would that would definitely make sense. Um, he's an ugly fucker, ain't he? Like you just look at him and you're just like, what? What is that? I mean, it's a duck frog. Well, Bill, you're obviously racist against Gungans. It looks like he looks like Titanosaurus <laughs> if he was severely mentally handicapped. You're gonna get like all kinds of shit from the anti-Gungan uh, defamation league. Fuck it. Is that a thing? Do they have a website? Do they have a Facebook account? Now, imagine Everyone, it, it, do they have Snapchat? Every group it, of people has a social justice lobby these days. Pay attention, Bill. That is very true. Eventually, you're going to have a college that's going to say, we need more Gungans I- I- employed in this university. All of the, all of the Jedi peep humans should, be, should quit right now so we can allow more Gungans to take their place. All you white yes, cisgendered Jedi just need to shut the fuck up, all right? Because we're gonna put these gungans. Because you're, you're the enemy. The world's problem is because of you, because of your race and gender and sexual orientation. You with your Jedi privileges. She think, just got real. <laughs> think you're the only ones who can pull off that ponytail, you fucking bastards. Andres is making fucking like social statements right now <laughs> through Star Wars. I mean, this is like this is hardcore, bro. <laughs> and the National of Association. Racism, the National Association for the Advancement of Ewoks is very offended by the way they were portrayed in the film. They are a proud people. Warwick Davis is their leader. <laughs> and their their struggle was like ten times better than the struggle that those fucking blue cat people from the Avatar had. I mean, come on. Hashtag Ewok lives matter. Ewok lives do matter. Pray for Endor. <laughs> Okay, so speaking of racial politics, let's move on to the final story where the <laughs> Chinese poster for the Star Wars The Force Unleashed has been revealed. And as you can see, The Force a Unleashed! A, a Force Unwakens, and as you can see, a certain character is kind, of, too. has kind of been missing. That's right. If you can see the, 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 the difference between the two posters, they have obviously excluded Chewbacca from the Chinese poster. Those anti Wookiee fucks. Oh shit, they did. But they kept the black guy. Yeah, they just shrunk him. They shrunk him down a lot. I saw this on a uh, on Facebook earlier. Yeah, I didn't even notice that they, <laughs> they took out Chewie. Why the fuck did they take out Chewie? Obviously, they hate space squashes. <laughs> space squashes. Space squashes. Space squashes in space. Space squashes. They also took out a couple of the Tie Fighters, which means that. It, you know, it means absolutely nothing. They changed Kylo Ren's pose. And the, em- oh, the em- there's so much. They, they emphasized- made BB-8 like the main focus of the poster. Like he's right, at because the I'm assuming when it comes, I think my friend Jonathan, who lives in, who's been living in Japan for about a year, um, he mentioned to me how like in in most Asian cultures, like the they like the cute characters tend to be like the really big draw when it comes to Asian entertainment. And so which would explain why BB-8 is center stage. Yeah, yeah. And as for uh, as for uh, John Boyega's character Finn having such a reduced level of prominence in the poster, like they completely changed like the size difference between Han Solo and him because Han Solo on the American poster is smaller than Finn is, mm-hmm. and then on the Chinese poster he's like at least twice as big. And that's the sort of thing you guys noticed that really thing weird. in the background of the poster that kind of looks like a Death Star. Yeah, the Star Killer base. Yeah. 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 Um, this is obviously not like it's kind of a thing that's been going on because I guess. Non-white actors do not have a real international draw when it comes to international audiences. Really? Yeah. And and why didn't they just I, cut him out of the poster altogether? Why just like make him really small? I don't understand. Because he's the fucking protagonist. <laughs> he's got to be on there somewhere. But the and trailers seem to be more focused on Ray so far. And they they seem to, they seem to be dual protagonists. Yeah. <laughs> and the th- yeah, the thing is, like international audiences are not as willing to see a movie that has a non-white actor in a lead role, especially if it's an African-American actor. And It's I, fucking crazy to me that we still live in that world. No, but it's, it's, it's not even America doing it this time, though, Bill. It's the rest of the world being racist about our movies. That's why I said we live in this world. I mean, that, I'm flattered. But. I'm not sure if you could say that America is more progressive because we are more accepting of other races. No, America's trying to be more progressive because... We well, we don't really have a choice, though. Is this, I mean, and I don't mean that in a way of, like, oh, we've been forced into... I mean, we don't have a choice in the sense of... We've lived in a, in, in a very melting pot culture... But even you know, still, it's, time, it's not like... Hundreds of years, Even so. still, it's, our, our system is so so not perfect. I mean, we still don't... Oh, God, we no! Don't, it's we, it's rarely, so heavily flawed. Rarely do we Andres, have an Asian a... lead actor, let alone, like, a Latino lead actor, unless it's, like, a specifically Latino-heavy film or an Asian-heavy film. 
there's been a real push, Andres, in our society recently to try and be more progressive and shit, but it just it, it's led to some bad results though because people and, get, because yeah, it's just led to people problem. getting it's just it's just got led to people getting offended over things that they shouldn't even be getting offended over. Like they'll get offended like I don't like the way you portray these Asian people, and then in the comments, some Asian person will be like, "This is perfectly fine." Like, what are you talking? Yeah, like about? people got upset over Who cares? Luis, uh, the character from Ant Man. I'm like, I don't fucking care. Yeah, it's like, who gives a shit? He's fucked. Yeah. <laughs> it's not trying to make some social statement about the way that all Latinos act, act that like. Race. It's just like, it's just a funny character that, you know, sure, might be like using some of those stereotypes to, to, to make some jokes funnier, but who cares? It's not like, it's not like, like, a sta- yeah, you, like you said, they're not making a statement about all Latinos, just this one dude in particular. Yeah, word. It's... it's uh... People, man. But, Andres, people. obviously you don't care about it because you are a, a person who has appropriated the white culture. Well, to, for, to, that, to that rebuttal, I'll say, fuck you. Fair enough. <laughs> and so I <laughs> brought up this older article to them, for me. To them, you're like Sam Jackson and Django. You're like the black dude who tries to, to act whiter so that he can get ahead in life. <laughs> But um, I, di- I did brought up this article from a year ago uh, co- related to the Sony hack where there was this one uh, producer, I want to say, or uh, there were emails between a, a producer and a, so- um, a head person at Sony. And there w- they kind of t- covered this topic a little bit where a Sony producer said that black actors, black, ac- black actors shouldn't have lead roles because international audiences are, by his words, racist. And the quote was here was like um, this had to this conversation came about due to the Denzel Washington film, The Equalizer, which was a film that did rather well in America because Denzel Washington is a rather, you know, respected, well-respected actor. But the, and awesome and awesome. But The Equalizer did not do so well in, in, in the international market. And his quote was, I believe that international motion picture audience that the international motion picture audience is racist in general pictures with an African-American lead don't play well overseas. When Sony made Equalizer, they had to know that Denzel opens pick uh, opens picks domestically. However, the international gross would be somewhat limited. Uh, no, I am not saying the Equalizer should not have been made or that African-American actors should not have been used. I personally think Denzel is the best actor of his generation, the producer responded. Casting him is saying we're okay with a double uh, if the picture works. And so, basically, whenever a movie is made in America that doesn't have a white lead actor, they're basically, like, relying on domestic sales for the majority of that film's profit. And, of course, this is Star Wars. Star Wars is, like, a huge brand. This is, like, way... Yeah, this is not... Racism is not going to bother this movie's box office. Yeah, yeah, like, like, but I guess, it like... It bother the Phantom Menace's box office, gross. Yeah, definitely not. And, and, and so, like, there, this is just a tiny example of showing that, hey, you know, even though there is a black actor in, a, in this big budget film, they're still trying to limit his his um, presence in order to appeal to people who may not react to, a, to, to an international market that may not react so kindly to a black actor's presence in this film, even if it is something as big as Star Wars, which is pretty sad to see in this day and age, as you mentioned before, Bill. Mm, well, it's, I think, it's really... Well, I guess the lesson here is, if you're a producer, and you have a movie that you want to do well overseas, just make them white. <laughs> Or yeah, make it make a the... cute, or make a cute little cartoony character like a robot. Is that why you think we've never seen like we don't see a lot of major African American or black characters in like anime and everything like they just don't. Well, oh, definitely. Don't, like the, thing is, the majority of well, in anime, when it comes to anime, most of those characters are meant to be Japanese because again, these most of these cartoons are made for a Japanese audience, and mm. Japanese the Japanese society itself is very. I don't want to say xenophobic, but they're very like we. Well, they're isolated. They're very yeah. They're very they're, they're, they're isolationists. So yeah, yeah, yeah. They prefer to be isolated. Where it's like we don't. We're not saying we hate other races. We just don't want to associate ourselves with them. Well, not so much anymore because they've 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 borrowed a lot of Americans' culture, Amer- a lot of America's culture in that way. So over over time, that's sort of gone away. Like they're not really isolationists anymore, but they were for so long. That's what true. The but it's, I think uh, most from of what the characters, I, most of the characters in anime are meant to be Asian, except for like Attack on Titan, where they're European and other. True, examples. but then again, like Attack on Titan is one of those like once in a blue moon sort of th- deals. 
Um, otherwise, the majority of anime would probably be like a typical Japanese high school drama or whatever. And even though those characters are supposed to be European, they still look Asian, though. Like, when I found out <laughs> what's-her-name is supposed to be the only Asian Mikasa? in that universe. Yeah, when I found out that Mikasa was supposed to be the only Asian in that universe, and, and of mm. course, she's, like, really good at fighting because it's Asian. Um, <laughs> whenever I found out that she was supposed to be the only Asian, I was like, wait, really? So obviously, mm. she's the descendant of Bruce Lee. My God. But, um... I think I remember my friend, my oh, my friend I mentioned um, who lives in Japan. He's to also told, shared with me how when it comes American uh, Japanese audi- um, pe- people in Japan are generally are interested in other cultures, namely American culture. But it's like they're interested in learning about it, but they're not as willing to embrace that sort of lifestyle completely. Where it's like oh, okay. they're willing to progress ever since like World War Two happened. They haven't and, you transitioned know, Americans... into eating McDonald's for all three meals <laughs> of the day. <laughs> Basically, they're like, they, but they don't want our they, civil they, our civil rights. Like, like they progressed to a certain point. Now, I wouldn't want to say progress because I don't know if that sounds in a, offensive or in in any sort of way. But they're like, more they're like able us, to, therefore they, they are they better. Became, they became more Western. Their culture became more Western, like ours, but not to the full extent that we have. We or France or or the UK has gone, they've never gone to that point yet, because there's still that part of them that's, like, hesitant about, you know, changing up, ro- changing up the status quo, or cha- rocking the boat, if you if you catch my drift. Gotcha, okay. I mean, it's only been a couple decades for them, to be fair. But okay, so I guess that makes sense why they totally fucked up this Star Wars poster, and, and very clearly made their racism known. Um, Have you guys seen the Japanese <laughs> trailer, though? Uh, no, I yeah. haven't. I, I guess I've gone at that point where it's like I don't want to see any more footage now. I'm I'm perfectly oh, fine. I, Andres, they, as they soon they don't as I really, saw that, I had enough. They don't really um, reveal any more information in the Japanese trailer, Andres. But there are some like really cool shots in it that aren't in the American trailer. Like, yeah, like see, I want to experience those cool shots from like when I see the movie for myself. Like, there's sure a enough. great part with Kylo Ren and and what's her name? It's great. Ray. Yeah, Ray. I love the Tie Fighter sunset shot. That's a, that's bad. I hate. The fucking names of the main characters in this new movie, though. It's just Ray Finn and, and Finn. Finn. Like, have you? Did you give up? Did you run out of cool names? You're just like Ray and Finn. I keep thinking well, about I mean, I, I, Star Wars name generator. You know, I keep I keep expecting like a title, someone to make a like a parody called Adventure Time with Finn and Ray. Right. Mm-hmm. Like I'm waiting for um, Ray to ha- or no Finn to have like a a, a pet Wookiee named Jake. And he, like, <laughs> sh- shift and shit. Yes. Mm, mm. I don't know. I, I like the I like the names. I have no problem with the names. They don't they don't bug me at all. Um, Everybody else in Star Wars has like memorable names, and then I heard those names. I was like, all right, I guess they're a little bit more basic than your typical Star Wars name, I guess. I mean, even Star Wars like names. even Princess Luke, like his he had a basic name is like fucking Luke, but then like his last name Skywalker. Well, we also don't know Ray and Finn's last names yet, though. So. No, I'm thinking they could very well be like Finn. Shark. It's it's ironic. Um, <laughs> and that's not at all. I um, and a lot of people on the internet are correct. Then Ray's full name may be Ray Solo. Yeah, that's my theory anyway. And I'm okay with that. She's, she's got to be either him and Leia's daughter or Luke fucked somebody at some point. Yeah, she's got to be either. Imagine, she's got to be a Skywalker or a Solo. Imagine if Finn turns out to be the Skywalker. That's that's the other fan theory is that is that Finn is. I would also say that Kylo Ren is definitely a Skywalker as well. If he's not, that's weird. I don't know about that. I don't know the way I that read somebody Ray... theorized once that maybe he was like, like Luke, like maybe after the events of Return of the Jedi, Luke like tried to restart the Jedi Order, which is something he did in the expanded universe. Um, mm-hmm. And like Kylo Ren was like an apprent, his he like attempt, his his attempt at having a Jedi apprentice who winds up like exploiting the dark side. If that's true, that's a cool idea. Mm, mm. Yeah, I, my theory is still that Ray and uh, Kylo Ren are twins. Both of them are the dis- are, uh, the children of Han and Leia, and one of them wanted to try and be a Jedi, but she gave up, moved to Jakku, and has been there ever since. And then Kylo Ren went crazy and became basically a Sith Lord, and Luke went into hiding because of it. And that's the way the if that's they, the reason why the galaxy is the way it is now. If they are twins, then that would be a bit of inspiration drawn from the now non-canon expanded universe, because right. in that Han and Leia had um, some some kids, and one of them wound up turning to the dark side. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Jason Solo, yeah. Um, I, uh, yeah, that's that's what I'm hoping is going to happen. Speaking of the Star Wars names, is it supposed to be Prin- is her is 
Prince it's Princess Leia's name is supposed to be pronounced Leia or Leah because I was watch after watching a New Hope I noticed that the characters say Leia even though throughout my whole life I always thought it was Leia. I have never heard anybody ever say Leia. I've only ever heard Leia. So I'm, yeah, I don't I'm know. Assume yeah, it's Leia. Watch, watch even... a New Hope. Pay attention to a New Hope. Like other characters say Leia. Is it Tarkin? Because he's got the, like that British accent shit going on. It's Peter Cushing, you know. Also, they didn't give a shit because nobody knew what Star Wars was back then. So. Yeah. Yeah. They They're just reading care. the script. They're like Princess uh, Leia. It's like Han or Han. It's, it's it's nobody knows. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Is it Han Solo or Han Solo? Fucking Han That's Solo true. over here. Like like someone. Hey Han, let's go. Uh, let's. Uh, when the I'm when the face. when the actors were lo- reading through like the names, they'd come across Luke and like, oh thank God, a normal name. Yeah, exactly. Hey Han, Brand, I got one. Brand Moff talking. What? What? <laughs> I I blew one of them up. Okay, kid, don't get penisy. <laughs> indeed, indeed. So that, well, that is the news for the Star Wars edition of the SLS. That is the update on what's been going on in a galaxy far, far away. Um, so we're we're over two hours at this point, so I think we're going to wrap things up. Is there anything else Star Wars related that you guys want to get off your chest before The Force Awakens comes out and before the world fucking explodes based on however people react to this movie? Because you know, however people react to this movie, pe- the world will explode. Like, if it sucks... Society's over. It's Mad Max, and if it's great, Golden Age, the future of fucking Bill and Ted. It's a utopia. I'm just really excited for this fucking movie now. When, when yeah. I first found out that Disney bought Star Wars, I was I was very I was not happy about it. I'm always skeptical when Disney gets involved with anything. One thing that pissed people off because people assume that Star Wars was a dead franchise at the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then Disney's like, we're going to do more of them. And at first even, like, like, I don't... even then, Star Wars always kind of existed in one way or another, be it video games or comics. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, basically like... expanded universe shit. Yeah, I wasn't particularly happy when I found out that Disney, of all people, had bought it. Um, and then, And then, you know, the teaser came out last year, and I was like, all right, that three-pronged lightsaber is pretty cool. But I'm still not sure how I feel about it. And then once the the newest trailer, not the Japanese one, but the American one, came out, it finally sold me completely. And and it's what sort of renewed my Star Wars fandom for another mm. for another generation. Um, yeah, all the, all the trailers have been excellent and just really really good at recapturing the feel of Star Wars while also really exclusively showing you stuff that's new to the franchise. I mean, mm-hmm. that's the thing that I can't believe they're getting away with so hard is that they're able to market this movie so much on new material for this universe. Well, I mean, also not- trying to remain in secrecy. I mean, even like when the Star Wars mm-hmm. toys came out in, uh, came, uh, came out on, on, what was it, like Black Friday? Or not even Black Friday, there was that date before, uh, like in October. Force, when, Force Friday. Force, Force Friday, Friday, thank you very much. None of the Finn toys had featured lightsabers. They were that dedicated to not ha- having anything revealing for the toy line, even though that would probably mo- most likely have cost them a lot of money in terms of, adver- in terms of, of like merchandising. Even though Finn having a lightsaber was already shown in the trailer, and the toy line did spoil C-3PO's red arm. True, true, yeah. Even, like, yeah. the pop figure came out with C-3PO's arm and that, all that. Yeah, and people were like, why is his arm red? And J.J. Abrams just like, time has passed. That's the only reason. Wizards? He lost, he lost it in, uh... <laughs> I mean... Yeah, I mean, he was Indeed. always gold in the original trilogy, but now thanks to the prequels, we well, have actually he had a silver he had a silver leg in, in New yeah, Hope. He had, he had the one silver leg, and then in in the prequel trilogy, we find out that he has this history of like replacing body parts over time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Do you guys have any massive reservations for the new movie? Oh, definitely, because like I'm I'm so afraid. I want this to be good. I so want this to be good. I love Star Wars, and I want this I want to be a this good to setup. Live up to the hype. I want this to be a good setup, especially for the new trilogy and what it's going to be, because I'm so fascinated by what they're going to do and going forward. I want to know what Andy Serkis' character is all about and what he looks like. He's oh, that's super... right. He's in the movie. Yeah, he's, he's... Is he fucked up looking? Does he look like the new Godzilla? Or... Will he, he actually be, be a like human God. being? You know, it's going to be a motion capture character, from what I understand, and his character is called, like, Supreme Commander Snoke. So apparently he's, yeah. like, the emperor of this franchise. He's the one who's behind And there's him. rumors that he's Darth Plagueis and all, all, all sorts of other fun stuff. Even though Darth Plagueis is supposed to be dead. But, uh, As if that stopped anybody before. <laughs> um, Star Wars is going to become biggest... like Doctor Who. Nobody's going to stay dead. Nobody. My biggest reservation about it is that I'm just afraid it's going to be too similar to A New Hope. Like, if you look at the, if you look at the trailer and you... 
sort of roughly put together a version of the story in your head. Mm-hmm. It's very, very similar. Um, I mean, it almost looks exact, like, if you, if you kind of piece it together, where it's like, you've got a droid crash landing on a desert planet, somebody finds it, they happen to be connected to the Force for some reason, and they go on an adventure to try and well, do, piece the... Do we know that BB-8 crash landed on that planet? It's pretty obvious. It to, it, but it seems to imply that BB-8 that Finn, accompanies we know that Finn Ray. Crashed. We know that Finn crash lands on the planet. We, but we also know from the Japanese trailer that uh, that, that Ray buys BB-8 oh. at the start of the movie. Okay. So we know that the, he that they haven't always been together. Also, BB-8 is a female, by the way. Female droid. Well, yeah, it was crazy. A, Everyone was so obsessed with the have droid's a gender. Droid. Mm-hmm. How can you have a female? Well, well that, there was you a, can't fuck. Well, there was like in 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 terms of female droids in Star Wars, there was the fe- the bar the the barmaid or the waitress from the fifties, the robot waitress from the fifties diner, and yeah, in there Star Wars, there was those um nurse droids out on Polis Massa and Revenge of the Sith that had like the uh, the, the female voices, but I never really and, and during of those... the. Uh, the Star Tour, the Star Tours, the Adventure Continues, which was like the revised like edition of the Disneyland Star Tours ride. There is a female robot that's giving the instructions when boarding the ride. Oh, and that mm. that one protocol droid at the beginning of Phantom Menace has a female voice, even though she just basically looks right. like Silver Sea Three PO. But even in those instances, I never really thought of droids as having a gender. I just thought that some of them were programmed with female. It seems voices. to just be an. It just seems like an arbitrary choice in the designer's part. Like, yeah, this is a girl droid. Especially with an with an astro. This one's got a dick. Especially with an astro meg droid, it's a really weird thing to do because they don't have voices. They just speak in like beeps and boops and shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, I'm wasn't, assuming there'll be some kind of reason for it. Wasn't there like some sort? Of, I think it was like on Star Wars Rebels they introduced like a pink R two D two astro mech. Oh, did they? I don't I know. I think man. so. Let me check. I don't watch that blue haired shit. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm against it. I don't like blue hair. That's not all of us. Um, all right. So you know what, boys? I say we wrap this thing up. Oh, wait, and I wanted s- to talk about one more thing. Oh, okay, go ahead. R2-KT. Oh. Uh, Katie. Oh. 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 Uh. That's some ratchet shit right there. Um, that's like in, in South Park when they made fun of K-9 from Doctor Who, because this one time they had a cat robot, and its name was Kit-10. Um. Oh. Oh. oh stop! <laughs> I can't take it anymore. Stop it! Wait, there was there, a, there was go. a there was a bird robot too. What was it? It was like. No. Don't uh, do this what was it called? Shit. Um. BD. Oh, those two want to fuck. Cockatoo. It was called cockatoo. <laughs> oh. Oh. So, oh. Oh. Tron. Stop. Stop taunting me! <laughs> it was great. Anyway, so anyway, so I discovered, and I, I told Andres about this, I discovered one of the greatest, like, series of books I've ever come across. Uh-huh. This happened, I happened upon them in my school library, of all places, killing the time, looking amongst the books. You're a library? What are you, some kind of nerd or something? Looking, yes, looking amongst the bookshelves, and I discovered something called, and the, the title immediately grabbed my attention, called William Shakespeare's Star Wars. Oh, yeah, this is all over the place. I fucking love it. So, is it good? Yes, it's fucking amazing. So this guy, fucking Ian, whatever his name is, fucking takes the six movies, the six Star Wars movies, and writes them in the form of Shakespeare plays. And it's genius, especially if you are a fan of both these things, like if you're a Star Wars fan and you also have an appreciation for the works of Shakespeare. It's genius, because he like does shit with the characters that Shakespeare probably would have done. For in- oh, so it's not just the same stories. It's, they're a little bit altered? Yeah, it's not a straight-up exa- straight adaptation. There are, um, there are things that are changed to make, to make them more Shakespearean. Sometimes random characters will go on rants, which is a thing that happens in Shakespeare. For example... Mm-hmm. There's a stormtrooper in A New Hope, and his line pretty much consists of, this door's locked, let's try the next one. And in the play, it's like this fucking soliloquy about how when he was a child, his father taught him that there was never anything interesting behind a locked door. And so, <laughs> and so he has made it, what? and so he has made it his life's, uh, he's made it a, a, a tenant of his life to, to just move on when there's a locked door. And Shakespeare did that shit all the time. You'd have a random. That is so fucking cool because it's the dumbest fucking life philosophy ever. I know. <laughs> but it makes perfect sense with that scene. That's awesome. It's just so perfectly Shakespearean because you would always have some random background character who gives a soliloquy about their life for some reason. 
And then another one of my favorites in in the play R two D two is actually able to speak, but he only speaks in beeps and boops when he's around other people because he likes to play the fool. When in reality, he's like the most intelligent character. He's the one with the most common sense, certainly. Yeah. So whenever the other characters are away, he'll have like solo like speeches where he's talking in like plain English and shit. Genius. Also, that scene I was talking about before, where the emperor's like taunting Luke, really great in Shakespearean language. I might have to read that now. See, I'm not a big fan of Shakespeare. I find his stuff extremely aged. Um, but uh, it's I, I might have to give that a try. It's a very be- interesting it's blending. Shakespeare. It's a very interesting blending of the two things. It's, it definitely makes sense. Star Wars is very, very Shakespearean. You know, Andres had this conversation. You could take the story of Star Wars and adapt it into pretty much any setting. And I don't know what made this guy decide to do it in Shakespearean, in Shakespearean form, but it's it's amazing and perfect, and I love it. All of the um. All of the text crawls from the beginnings of the movies have been converted into sonnets that appear at the beginning of each book. Oh, that's okay. That's awesome. Yeah, it's just it's just genius. The whole thing is genius. Um, I haven't gotten to read any of them in full yet, but I just read like bits and pieces when I was at the library, and it's, it's fucking amazing. I, I want to get my hands on all of them and read them cover to cover. Maybe even like talk about them at some point on the internet. I don't know, but because that's the thing that you sometimes do. Yeah, you know. Occasionally I get excited about YouTube again for like 10 minutes, and I'm like, fuck it. <laughs> same, no, same. JK! Anyway, so guys, I think that's going to do it for our very, very special edition of the SOS Star Wars special. We're going to add in all sorts of CGI crap. We're going to add in a CGI David to pretend like he was here. Hey. And we're gonna And we're going to dub over all his lines and everything. It's going to be fucking great. David was supposed um, to be here. We're we were supposed to record time. this video like Saturday fucking night, and we didn't because David couldn't be here, which is why we wound up having to like put the Godzilla news in this episode that was supposed to be all Star Wars, and then fucking he just. So it kind of turned out for the best, actually. No David wonder why just... people want to kick his ass so much. David yeah, no, no, threatening, no, 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 threatening his, his hate people are th- putting threats on his life now. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, that's right. He's got like he's gotten death threats now. So why? Yeah. Because he likes 2014. Although I'm pretty sure there are a couple other reasons why I can think because of Because liking something is enough grounds to be murdered. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, that pissed... Dylan's just like, yeah, that's a fact of life. Oh, yeah, that pissed me off, that bullshit. I'm like, yeah. hey, guess what? People on the internet might have a different opinion from you, you stupid, simpleton, mo- molly-coddled fucking children. Yeah, let's not dignify them with a the response, though. Like, they're so insane. It's like, you can't possibly take them seriously. It's oh, just like, not. They're like... They're just like... can't... And, and then they'll go like on the toddler who like throws a tantrum and then like smears his shit on the wall for attention. Like what? What's I happening? would I would almost like be like yes, c- just come to my house. Let's have a conversation. I just want to know. I'm just like what goes on in your head? You know, it's only if only we could do what Jane Jay and Silent Bob did at the end of Jane and Silent Bob Strike Back, where they just go on a mon. There's a montage of them going to every single one of those, these little kids homes and start beating the ever-loving shit out you know, of them. No, I wouldn't want to beat them up. I would just want to go, like, what is your life that just makes you go, I'm going to kill people because they don't like the same movie. Or it was like, I'm going to talk about wanting to kill people. Yeah, it's just like, what What happened to you? Are you like, that what, bored what is your with your life? What is your story? So You, you know like, what, go to can't... their house, you hand them a gun, you hold it up to your own fucking hand, like, do it, you fucking pussy. Oh my god. And they, like, run away the right. fucking trigger. You're like Gohan in fucking Battle of Gods. You're like, shoot me right in the fucking face. Do it, you son of a bitch. Do me a fucking favor. Do it. And they like, um, they like cry and cut themselves. So go ahead and tell us your story in the comments below. Tell us your story of your time in a galaxy far, far away. What's your favorite Star Wars thing? What's your favorite Star Wars character? Do you even like Star Wars? Tell us all these things Are you a in the comment section below. Are you a who hates Star Wars? I will admit that when I was a child, there was a time where I was like, Star Wars, FTW, fuck Star Trek. And then I started watching The Next Generation. I was like, oh, I actually like both. See, there was see, there was actually a time recently where I was like, fuck Star Wars, Star Trek. And now I'm like, nah. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyway, so I think that's going to do it for this uh, special episode of uh, SOS, uh, the, the Force Unawakens, as Andre said before. Uh, um, no, The Force Regrets. The Force Regrets. It regrets that's, that's, that it awoken for us. Yeah, it regrets that it woke up. It wants to go back to sleep and take a nap and never wake up again. Yeah, I see where people are calling the new Godzilla movie Revengeance. Oh, oh that, that, that that was from uh, from a Metal Gear Solid spinoff game called Metal Gear Solid Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. Makes sense. Godzilla Makes sense. Revengeance. <laughs> 
Anyway, so until next time, everyone, I'm Bill Worcester, a.k.a. Zazabar. I'm Super DM 64 And I'm Address Perez, a.k.a. Kaiju Noir, and it was a boring conversation anyways. Oh, oh wow, okay, fuck you. Oh, fuck your um, shit, man. Jesus Christ, you <laughs> fucking piece of shit, that was so mean. That's um, what I get for trying to make an obscure Star Wars reference. Why don't you just oh. fucking... Oh, really? Was that Was that a reference? What was that a reference to? I didn't get that at all. It's a Han Solo <laughs> reference when he was like, everything's up, all, everything's all right here. Uh, oh, how well, are see, you? If you would, oh, if you would, everything's if fine. You parodied, how, how are you? If you had parodied that line, I would have known what the fuck you were talking about. But because yeah, that's like my favorite moment in the New Hope. See, the problem, Andre says, yeah, you have one really good bit of dialogue, and then people just forget the next line, and you chose that next line to reference. <laughs> Uh, that was that was face. the laugh of a that was the laugh of a defeated man. Even the most <laughs> just crushed him. even the most famous uh, line in all of Star Wars constantly gets fucking misquoted because it's not fucking Luke, I am your father. It's no, I am your father. No, I am your father. Yeah. But when you yeah. take that out of context, it makes less sense. So people started saying Luke because then people would immediately be like, oh yeah, Star Wars. Anyway, so until next time, everyone. Uh, that was. That was the podcast. I don't know why I said that again. My bad. Um, so, uh, until next time, everyone, enjoy The Force Awakens. Have a great week. Next time we do this show, The Force Awakens. And may The Force be with you. Out. Oh, next episode, we'll probably do a little... Uh, you know, we might just do a review of The Force Awakens in the next episode. We'll we'll have to see. We'll have to Let's see how see. things go. We might do it as a separate video. We'll see. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get into it. It would give us a chance to reuse this title card. Yeah, we can use it twice. We can be lazy on top of everything else, which is my favorite thing ever. So, oh, you know what? We might do it because our next episode is our Christmas special. So, and the end of the season. So, maybe uh-huh. we'll do that Christmas portion. Then we'll do our usual New Year's. Problem is, I'm not really that sure time of the year really already. See it on the opening day. So, if I can't, yeah, Trace, you're gonna have to do your Rock and Eve this year. Are you excited? Oh boy! No. Get, get ready to shed tears when I talk about all the dead people who passed Uh-oh. away. Yeah. Oh man, this this this. Oh God, man! What's that you do with this we year? Lost, it's gonna suck. We lost Christopher Lee and Leonard Nimoy. Yeah, yeah. Leonard fucking Nimoy, man. It's gonna be rough. It's Galvatron be rough. is but, dead. <laughs> <laughs> but until then, everyone, have a have have a have a, a time, man. Have a have a time. Have a time. Uh, we don't know if it's good but, or bad. Just have I'm it. I'm gonna specify what kind of time you should have because you don't listen to us. We don't, have we, it. We don't run your life. Well, we don't. We don't have a force in. Oh! The science is time for travel accommodations are not included. Good night, everyone. I bid you farewell. The worst.